Third member's motion. Motion under the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance. Members who wish to speak on this motion will please press the request to speak button. And I'll call upon Mr. Dr. Kokaki to speak and move the motion. Dr. Kokaki. Thank you, Mr. President. You might have read recently a new document from the government. Well, it's a news clip of the ICAC. The uh, news, the clip says that well, a lot of uh, Hong Kong people uh, wear a blindfold covering one eye, say meaning that um, people just turn a blind eye to injustice, and they are uh, people are appealed to lift up that eye patch so that they will not turn a blind eye to injustices. Well, before I move the motion to invoke the. Uh, of the relevant legislation to s set up to use the LCPNP, I would like to say this first. In effect, a lot of people have been telling Hong Kong people to wear that eye patch. Uh, a lot of people make investments. A lot of people hoard land. They uh, speculate on uh, properties, and there are a lot of BVI companies, the British Virgin Island companies. Well, they may they might have uh, evaded tax. They might have made a bit of profit, but it doesn't matter. I don't know when now the electrical will degrade into something appalling as this. We see that there is something that is very blatant that people uh, people perceive an injustice that there are a lot of things that are unclear. How can we turn a blind eye towards it? Some people say that the LC uh, PMP is a trump card and it should not be used um, arbitrarily. And in March 2012, the then CE candidate C Y Leung was a member of the panel of jury of the W K C D competition and there were suspicions that there was conflict of interest. Before the LegCo set up a select committee, we heard the same voice that it didn't matter, that there was no evidence to say that the uh, that these um the then CE candidate C uh, Y Leung was using his was using his power was abusing his power. And at that time, there was a select committee, and we investigated into the matter. We saw a lot of unfairness and injustice. And there was a chance for Hong Kong people to see what is right and what is wrong. And in 2008, December, the Let's Go set up a select committee to investigate into the former um, permanent secretary of the um, of the department, uh, Mr. Lang Chin Man. He was involved in some interest to do with a new world development. Some people said that, well, everyone will have to find something to do if they wish after they have retired. You can't stop them from taking up employment after ret uh, retirement. And it was only a job. And in Hong Kong, if you don't work for A, you work for B. And Mm, the rich are mostly developers, and he well, he has been involved in um, real estate and property in his line of work, but it did not matter. But in the end, there was a select committee, and I'm not going to repeat what happened afterwards. So, there is one single clear reason for the setting up of a select committee. It's because we don't want people to be able to abuse their position for private interests. Some people say that from July till now, including uh, in a number of um, meetings of a development panel, the secretary, Mr. Chan, has explained a number of times. But the more he explained, the more mucky the matter is. The first time he said 
it was his wife and the family member of his wife. And then, when the media further reviewed additional information about the matter, that the it was the son, it was the son that was the family member of his wife. Any honest person will not use such a way to dodge the issue. If it's just a normal investment without any interests on to what interests involved, there is no need to try to hide. And some people say it doesn't really matter. It's a piece of land and it's been almost 19 years. Don't forget. For the NT, NE, the New Territories North East Area Development, covers the site in question. When the area was delineated by the Bureau, they, they it was their decision, the decision of the Bureau and it involves a large amount of money. We want to set up a select committee to ask Paul Chan to come here, only for this, to tell the truth. I believe if indeed a select committee is set up, we only need one or two afternoon. If the Secretary, Mr. Chan, took oath, and spoke the truth, it would not take long to find the bottom of the truth. We're not here to find out what goes on in their private affairs. We're talking about a principal official uh, involved in a development that uh, cost about $30 billion, excluding um, hundreds of billions of dollars in private development. If the let's go continues to turn a blind eye, to turn the other cheek. We have failed the public. The Civic Party conducted a survey. 67% of the respondents thought that uh, Paul Chan committed a um, blatant uh, conflict of interest. 63% of the respondents said that he had lied. And 58% of uh, the people think that he should not get involved in the development anymore. And 59% of the people think he should step down. This Hong Kong U conducted a survey in September on Popularity ratings of principal officials. Support rating of uh, Paul Chen was 14%. Those who object to him uh, doubled that amount. And there is a net uh, popular rating of minus 46%. Is the lowest in record since the um, appointment system was in place. And it shows very clearly how the public see it. Mr. President, I will listen very carefully to all members, people who hold a different view or people who object to this motion when they speak. They have to bear in mind that they have to explain themselves to the public and their constituents. So I move the motion print on the agenda be passed. I now propose the question to you, and that is that the motion moved by Dr. Pokaki be passed. Chief Secretary for Administration. Mr. Deputy, Dr. Pokaki moves this motion under the Legal Pass and Privileges Ordinance to set up a select committee to investigate into the farmland owned by Mr. Paul Chen, the Secretary for Development in the uh, New Territories. As Chief Secretary for Administration, I urge members to uh, reject this motion because um, I've noticed that uh, a similar motion was uh, vetoed uh, at uh, last Friday's uh, House Committee meeting. Uh, there is a lack of quorum, says Dr. Kwok. So, Secretary, please ring the bell.
。政務司司長。Chief Secretary for Administration。Mr. Deputy, Dr. Kwok Ha Kee is now moving this motion that, under the Electrical Powers and Privileges Ordinance, that this council should set up a select committee to investigate into the Secretary for Development, Mr. Paul Chen's uh, ownership of a farmland in NT North East. Uh, on behalf of the SAR government, I'd like to urge members to oppose this motion. In fact, I noticed that uh, a similar motion was uh, rejected uh, by the House Committee meeting last Friday. In fact, uh, since it was reported on the 20th. 2nd of July this year, that uh, Mr. Paul Chen and his family owned uh, farmland in NT Northeast uh, during the past two months or so. Mr. Paul Chen has already openly and uh, publicly given an account on this uh, to the public and this council. With regard to questions uh, put to him by members of this council, Mr. Paul Chen has already clarified the situation. His wife and also uh, the uh, company also issued statements on various occasions, and Mr. Chen will be taking the opportunity today to explain further in order to allay concerns of the public, in particular the allegation leveled by Dr. Kwok Ha Kee. Well, after assuming office uh, as secretary as the secretary for development, after Mr. Paul Chen has learned about uh, the uh, possible conflict of interest, he has already made a declaration uh, to the chief executive, Mr. C. Y. Leung, and in accordance with the EXCO declaration system, he has also declared interest, as the chief executive said earlier. On this particular incident, Mr. Paul Chen has completely complied with the existing declaration requirements, and we do not see that there is any evidence to show that uh, in discharging his duties uh, and also in dealing with the um, NT Northeast new development, there has been any violation or improper conduct on the part of Mr. Paul Chen. In Dr. Key, Dr. Kwok's uh, remarks, apparently he was uh, suggesting that uh, Mr. Paul Chen, as Secretary for the for development would be able to personally influence um, the land use in NT Northeast. Uh, in fact, uh, from the system, uh, I'd like to refute this because, uh, as the former Secretary for Development, I've also been involved uh, in major land zoning planning. And I can only say that um, as Bureau Director, well, in terms of development, including the NT Northeast development, we will have to act in accordance uh, with the established mechanism. The professional de department concerned will be coming up with the proposal, and then there would be public engagement exercises, uh, and uh, there would be collection of public opinions, and then we will go through this council, district council, and other stakeholders. We will consult all of them, and the department would be looking at the issue from the professional angle in collecting opinions, and then the uh, proposal will be revised, and it's not for the Secretary for Development to personally influence uh, or affect uh, the outcome of such uh, exercises, and therefore any allegation or suggestion that uh, the Secretary would be able to make use of his power to influence or give directions as to how things should be developed, well, uh, that uh, cannot be further, for, further from the truth uh, with regard to the established uh, mechanism is also grossly unfair to the secretary. I understand we understand the concerns of the public about on this issue, and uh, we also understand that uh, the public does have high hope on uh, politically appointed officials. And uh, as Mr. Chen has already be repeatedly issued statements and given accounts on this at various on various occasions, including development panel meetings, he has already indicated that uh, he will continue to explain and clarify the situation. We do not see any reason why we should invoke uh, the electrical powers and privileges uh, ordinance in setting up a select committee to look into this. As some members uh, have pointed out uh, at the House Committee meeting last Friday, the, uh, we should, the matter should come to an end. We should no longer waste time on this. And both the administration and this council have more important things to do, which have to do with people's livelihood and other issues. And therefore, to spend time and energy on this is not uh, in line with the expectation of the public, and it's also not cost effective. I'll be listening to members' views before I respond further. Thank you. The Secretary of Development. Mr. Deputy, members of this council, with regard to my wife and her family owned property in Kutong North, I responded to the media earlier and also responded to questions of the LegCo. I explained that many times before. My wife and also the owner of the, the company. Um, has issued uh, notices and news releases. Perhaps information was rather diverse, and uh, therefore there were certain concerns. I would like to address those concerns uh, once again. Before I go into uh, 
uh, the details, let me reiterate uh, that I have all along disclosed interest and declared interest according to the system. In responding to members' questions, I've also uh, told you the truth. And one year ago, my wife also sold her interest to her brother. Uh, my family therefore did not own any um, farmland and there was no conflict of interest. As for my explanation and clumsiness in my explanation, which caused public concern, I would like to apologize for that. Mr. Deputy, the first point is on the interest in the Ku Tong uh, farmland. The statement Industries Limited in 1994 bought about 20,000 square feet of farmland in Ku Tong. In 1994, when farmland was bought, my wife uh, bought it through Orient Express, OE. Um, it held 35.7% of state um, statement industries and therefore owned uh, part of the interest. The other shares are owned by the family of my wife through Excellent Assets Limited EA and also Fidelity Management Limited or FM. Therefore, EA and FM um, owned interests of the farmland which belonged to the family of my wife. All along, I and my wife and also our children have never been the uh, shareholders of, uh, or rather, ha ha have never been the beneficial owner of EA and FM, and um, they have not. And then another agent, New Horizon SS Limited, NH, uh, uh, held the shares. The change was a replacement of agents by the family of my wife. I, my wife, and my children are not uh, beneficial owners of NH. My wife's family since October last year no longer held the share in uh, by agents. Um, the, um, her family members how, uh, uh, since then hold their shares in their real name. And according to the notice of Statement Industries um, last year or this year in July, uh, the details uh, in transfer of shares are shown. Since October 2012, the shareholders of Statement Industries are individual shareholders and they uh, are the family members of um, my wife's family, and uh, they, the shares are not held by any company. In the past 19 years, all along, I have not owned uh, any beneficial shares of uh, statement industries. Since the sale of 37.5% uh, of uh, OE, um, my wife and I and my children uh, have not owned any farmland um, in Ku Tong. The uh, family members of my wife bought the uh, shares 19 years ago, and their ownership started there and then. Um, in respect of my, uh, my taking up the post of um, development, Secretary for Development, there is no uh, direct relation. And since October last year, Statement Industries is owned by the individuals and they are family members of uh, my wife and they are not, um, and I do not, I'm not involved in any property, uh, property. As for declaration of interest, I follow the uh, guidelines for uh, POAs and also the guidelines for executives, uh, executive council members. According to the requirement of the executive council, the declaration register ha has been published, and the um, interests are the interests owned by myself. As for the interests of my wife, which I don't have any uh, beneficial interests, such interests I do not need to declare. From 2008 to 2012, when I was a legal member, in the um, Councillor declaration, councillor's declaration of interest. I declared uh, the ownership of land, uh, office, and residential property in Hong Kong, 
by my family members and also the uh, company ownership by my uh, family members holding shares more than 1%. And these companies have uh, um, do involve in um, investing in property. I've never hide anything. Since um, 2011, when I was aware of the uh, Kutong land was in the NDA, I reported to the CE and my wife also proposed to uh, transfer the shares immediately so as to avoid any possible conflict of interest. My wife, in uh, October 2012, sold her, her shares, all her shares of Statement Industries owned through Orient Express. She sold uh, all the shares to her brother at the uh, price of $2.7 million. Uh, the survey or rather, the media uh, asked a surveyor, and the surveyor was reviewed that the price was reasonable. My wife had received uh, the funds, and there was a contract, and the transfer document was also stamped. So it is not um, property held in trust. The documents have been released to the media. This is a real transaction, and the transaction uh, was conducted between my wife and her brother. I did not provide any funding to her brother. This transaction has nothing to do with me. I stress once again that my wife and my children, in respect of um, the NDA, uh, has never uh, um, do not own any land interests, nor uh, do I. Apart from the Kutong farmland owned by statement, the family members of my wife do not own any land in the NT, um, East NDA. As for the unfounded argument, uh, founded allegations say a suspicion of dodging of interest. Now, after statement industries um, um, asked for the uh, was given the status of a dormant company, it paid about uh, sixty dollars per uh, six months as rent. In fact, since 1994 July, the statement applied for the status of a dormant company. In 1996, um, about two years after the purchase of land, because uh, it was discovered that part of land uh, was occupied, after asking the occupant to leave uh, to no avail in order to protect interest, uh, it's, um, the a contract was signed with the occupant, and the rent was sixty dollars uh, per half year as a nominal rent. And the arrangement was made for about a year or so, and the total amount of rent um, uh, obtained uh, was less than the amount for business registration per year. There was no dodging of tax, uh, no, nor was there any uh, profits. And in the past decade or so. The statement industries has never engaged in any uh, operation. All along, uh, statement industries has just um, um, bought uh, this piece of land and owned this piece of land. Apart from having this piece of land, it doesn't have any other assets. Uh, there, uh, there was a nominal rent collected because of protection of title, and it has never engaged in any other business operation. It was also said that I made use of agency company to hide my interest on farmland. I have to point out that the family of my wife um, owned land through statement. It was statement industries. It was done a decade, more than a decade ago, and at that time there was no consideration that I would participate in politics. Now. It is said that I have become the Secretary for Development, and that is linked with the share arrangement of a decade or so ago. That is really a f nothing is further from the truth. Uh, in response um, to the questions, in fact, I have uh, given detailed explanation, and I stress that I don't own any interest in farmland, and I have never dodged tax. My wife and also statement industries, which uh, hold the land, uh, have issued many um, news releases, and my wife has also um, published notices in several newspapers to clarify the points. 
I understand the members public are concerned about the matter, and I would like to take this opportunity to clarify once again to address the uh, and remove the concerns of the public. I hope members uh, can see this and oppose Mr. K.K. Kwok's motion. Thank you. Mr. Charles Peter Mock. Mr. Deputy, my concern about Mr. Porchan's incident is not personal in nature. It's not just because of investment or related matters. I'm concerned that par the parties concerned, including the administration, may have certain undesirable practices and measures that may impact uh, on all. Over ten odd years ago, members already asked uh, how it could be foreseen that Mr. Po Chan could become a high-ranking official, even if he had been hoarding land or making investment. So what? Yes, such arguments are correct. Such arguments can also be applied to other issues like subdivided units. The question is whether Mr. Po Chan made sufficient declaration whether the administration has followed up on the issue appropriately and adequately, and whether or not the administration has been selective in such arrangements. For the new North East New Territories Development Project, Mr. Chan, the secretary, his wife, and his family bought a Kutong land site 19 years ago. Yes, at that time, that was not problematic. After Mr. Paul Chance assumed office, how did he handle the matter? That's what we would like to look into. Mr. Chan said that he made a declaration to the CE last year. His wife sold her interests. Her family member also sold all interests. Over 10,000 square feet of land might have been hoarded in the new territories which is directly related to the future development project. Thus, members of the public suspect uh, that there are concealment on their part. It's better to avoid suspicion. Let's not talk about the politically appointed officials. Even for other senior officials, they're always very careful. Even a cup of coffee, a ball pan, pen as souvenir, they won't accept them. Of course, some people may claim that if we have excessively high expectations for politically appointed officials, nobody would be willing to enter the hot kitchen. But that's not reasonable. We must not lower our threshold and requirements. For very obvious incidents, if we turn a blind eye to them, they may impact on the whole system or government. In August this year, a set of guidelines were published on declaration of interest. It stated therein that even if there's no direct interest, if the interest may affect the judgment of the officials, even on the part of the family's relatives, private good friends, and so forth, a declaration must be made to the CE. For civil servants, there's a specific and clear mechanism for declaration in writing. Apparently, everything is there, but the devil lies in the details. Can our officials just explain to the CE? Do they have to explain to the public potential interest and conflict of interest? Members of the public would like to hold our accountable officials accountable. We generally believe that they would not act in accordance with their personal interest. But in the LegCo, we should serve as monitors. If every time we turn a blind eye to certain matters, then we'll be neglecting those officials in dereliction of duty, will not be doing a good job for members of the public. We must not leave everything to the CE in terms of monitoring. Mr. Deputy, I'm not saying that officials should not own land sites, but they must explain to the public as early as possible. When the secretary assumed office, he should have uh, come into knowledge of NT North East. 
He should have known that he had owned land sites there. When major interests are concerned, when he consulted the various districts, he only said that he cited possible conflict of interest only in September. He said that uh, in accordance with the rules and regulations, he might not have uh, to declare his interests. But this falls short of public expectation. The CE thought that that was not problematic. The CE, CY Loan told the media that the Secretary had already observed the declaration guidelines. In accordance with the declaration interest, the Secretary had already declared his interests. All along, the CE office had not announced when it had received Mr. Paul Chan's declaration. Is it that he only made the declaration after the incident was exposed? The public wouldn't accept that. Are there loopholes in the declaration interests? Obviously, we need to set up a select committee under the Electrical Powers and Privileges Ordinance to pursue this. There are other issues to pursue. Number one, when Mr. Chen, the secretary, knew that he might be engaged in conflict of interest in this project, he said that he never had any interest in farmland, but the media exposed that he personally signed tenancy agreements with the tenants. So was he making false declarations? Number two, Mr. Paul Chan said that the land site was used for leisure purpose, but the land site had been deserted for so many years. This is something to do with trustworthiness and honesty. Number three, is it that Mr. Chan's family no longer has any interest in Northeast NT? Has he passed the interest to other family members? Was there dishonesty? We need a select committee to objectively look into these issues. These are closely related to future mechanisms of declaration of interest. I hope to see advancement in the anti northeast project. But in July, when we had public hearings, very few people discussed the project itself. Most focused on Mr. Chan's matters. Is Mr. Chan still an appropriate person to promote the Northeast NT development project. Mr. Chan's explanation has not allayed public doubts and queries. Honesty was involved very often, and every time there are people who say that the Lichko should not inquire into this. But uh, we have a heavy responsibility on us. If every time we turn a blind eye to these issues, we're not doing a good job for the public. Now, please look at this very carefully. If we can conduct a clear <coughs> inquiry, it's actually to the advantage of Mr. Chan. If he does not hide anything, if he has not made any mistake, we should provide a platform for him to explain in more detail to the public. If the select committee's conclusion is that Mr. Chan has not done anything wrong, we can rescue his reputation and do him justice. We should allow Mr. Chan to explain the whole matter clearly to the public. If there are major conflict of interest, and even if there are suspected offences, if the person involved, the secretary, is still involved in this development project, it's not to the interest of any party. Mr. Chan said that he had been alleged to have provided unclear explanation. He said that he already made clear explanation. He might have been clumsy in his explanation only. I think the LegCo is duty-bound to look into this. Maybe some people will say that time will allow everything to pass, but if we allow a wound to go on, we're only paralyzing ourselves, we'll only be injured even more deeper. 
So I support uh, this motion to appoint a select committee to inquire into the incident uh, of Mr. Paul Chan's owning a farmland in Northeast NT. Thank you. Mr. Liang Yuzhong. Mr. Deputy, Dr. Guo Kaki moved this motion today to set up a select committee to inquire into the possible conflict of interest of the Secretary for Development, Mr. Paul Chan, in the farmland ownership and the NENT new development project. I support the motion, not because I think um, there is um, for sure a conflict of interest. I support this motion because an opportunity should be given for Secretary to clarify himself, to vindicate himself. Um, just now when he spoke, he said that uh, many of the allegations um, are unfounded, and uh, just now the Secretary also said that uh, uh, gave a very detailed account. However, those explanations were not given under affirmation. Those aff those explanations were only um, for self-serving purposes. Throughout the whole incident, Secretary, you have time and again tried to explain away uh, the incident. However, it gives people an impression that the explanations given by you and your wife are fragmented. Are, and uh, were given in drips and drabs. And if we do not invoke the electrical PNP to set up an inquiry, you may s still say that, uh, sorry, I've made an omission. And in fact, we don't know if you have given a full account of the matter. So a platform should be given for you to give a very detailed account of the incident, uh, as well as a platform for you to vindicate yourself. Why don't you allow yourself to be given this opportunity? You should not be afraid of um, uh, this chance to explain yourself in the inquiry. I recall uh, that uh, for other officials, like uh, Mr. Timothy Tong, well, he gave an account in front of the media, and yet he gave a different account in this council. As a result, the council had to invite him to give us another account in the council. So the problem is the explanations given or the account given uh, immediately after the e incident might not be a full account. Today, we're not trying to say that you're guilty. We're only giving you an opportunity to vindicate yourself and to clarify yourself. Why um, are you against it? Well, if someone um, commits a wrong, um, he might choose to uh, evade liability. But at least there should be a courage for you to explain the matter. As uh, the Secretary for Development, you, uh, I believe you have also had a hard uh, time because in front of the public you have always been questioned uh, by the public in terms of your integrity and it's difficult for you to promote uh, any policy. So it's a chance for you to rectify the situation and regain confidence uh, in the public. And I feel really shameful um, having heard uh, what you said. You said that, well, others also uh, are also against Dr. Kwokaki's uh, motion. And in fact, you shouldn't be saying these words because um, you have personal interest in it. And uh, it's different from Mrs. Carrie Lam, as Chief Secretary for Administration, to say the same because she is a third party. However, this matter uh, involves you yourself, and it's unreasonable for you to say something like that. This, is ex this exactly shows that you're trying to defend yourself. You dare not face the public. You dare not give an account um, to clarify any wrongs you've done. And this is not the acceptable attitude, especially as the secretary. Just now, the chief secretary also remarked that this uh, incident should come to a close. 
We also want to come to a close. We also want the administration to push forward policies and initiatives um, concerning livelihood. However, the secretary should be responsible for rolling out policies. But when his integrity is being called into question, how can he do that? I also want this matter to come to an end. And the only way to do it is to reveal the whole truth, to give him a chance to vindicate himself so that there is confidence uh, in him uh, from the public so that he can roll out policies. This council is not democratic and you are saying that the matter should come to a close in order to hide the truth. What good does it do for the whole government? Chief Secretary, you, if you say that this matter should come to a close, then how can you account for the fact that the popularity of the Secretary since he assumed office has remained very low? If the public has indeed forgotten about the whole incident, he would not be given um, such a low rating. So I support this motion today because I want Secretary to be given a chance to give a full account to the public so that you can regain confidence, so that your popularity will not continue to drop. However, you're rejecting this idea, and if you do that, your popularity will remain low, and it, you will just face more difficulties in promoting your policies. So, Secretary, you should do some soul searching. What good does it do if this goes on? I once uh, chatted with you uh, on an occasion. I told you that regardless of uh, whether there is any wrongdoings involved. There is already um, a confidence crisis among the public, and this doesn't do, do any good. And I even asked you to step down. I asked you to give up this job because uh, Mr. Paul Chan, uh, whom I know, uh, is a very committed person, but now uh, there is um, an integrity issue, and that is why you have such pop low uh, popularity rating. It has nothing to do with your ability. You're doing, uh, you are much more able than other principal officials, but your low popularity rating has to do with your integrity issue. And now you're given a chance, and yet you're not accepting it. You're rejecting it. So how can you carry on with your work? So I once again appeal to you, Secretary, Mr. Chen, you should either step down or you should accept our proposal to set up an inquiry. This is just an inquiry. It doesn't mean that you are guilty. You can be vindicated. So why don't you accept this chance? Mr. Deputy, I support this motion. Mr. Kenneth Leung. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. I would like this case to come to a close, but my professional judgment tells me no, it can't come to a close. Secretary, you and I are both professionals. The explanation you gave um, do you think a professional accountant would accept it? Let's say or an auditor would it accept it if an auditor goes to your office to check the books and you told him, well, I've signed a declaration to prove that um, these transactions have taken place. Do you think the auditor would still ask to see the documents? Now, that's just one of the doubts I have. Many in this chamber have said that uh, about um, doubts or allegations against uh, Mr. Chen um, stockpiling on land. It may have nothing to do with Mr. Chen. It's his wife and his wife's family. But uh, Mr. Deputy, let me draw an analogy. 
in the uh, listed um, companies um, reg legislation or um, provisions on connected transactions. In terms of connected transactions, the definition is that if a director or someone connected to him engages in transactions, then um, at least the transactions must be fully revealed. And if it's a major transaction, then I'm talking about listed companies, of course. All shareholders must vote in favor of the transaction. Here we're talking about the Northeast uh, NT development. It costs more than $100 billion. It w the money will come from the government. And of course, um, the sum involved is much bigger than that, uh, say, involving a listed company. And in a listed company's legislation for connected parties, uh, they could include uh, the wife of Mr. Chen, um, parents, spouse, siblings. The connected parties also cover the parents, um, siblings, and relatives of uh, Mr. Chen's wife. So if we apply the same rules. Now, Mr. Chen, you say you do not have any direct or indirect interest. Is your fam your wife or her family holding such interest? Then, obviously, there is already the suspicion of conflict of interest. We have to get to the bottom of the truth. We have no choice. On the 26th of July 2013, we had a special meeting of the development panel. Members voted um, 11 to 7 in favor of motion asking Mr. Paul Chen to step down. That's a non-binding motion. On the same day, I also moved a humble motion. I asked uh, Mr. Paul Chen and his family to disclose information on the land interest they 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 hold in the uh, northeast NT, but uh, the motion was a tie, seven to seven, and uh, the um, chairman declared that the motion was not carried because uh, not more than half of the members present voted in favor of the motion. But actually, under the circumstance, the panel chairman had a casting vote. In such a circumstance. All we are asking for is some information. In Mr. Paul Chen's speech, he said uh, people made uh, unfair allegations against, against him, and he's already given an account on many issues. But I feel frustrated, really, about this case. In July, many from the media asked me what happened. How come all of a sudden there's a new company called New Horizon that came about? How come uh, Mr. Chen's family had so many companies? Perhaps this um, depiction doesn't cover all the companies held by Mr. Chen or his wife and her family. There are 12 companies here. Among them, four are overseas companies. There's a classic success, International Limited, Excellent Assets Limited, Fidelity Management Limited, Already Express Holdings Limited, four overseas companies. Now, our concern is really not, is not really about whether Mr. Paul Chen's family bought some land over 20 years ago, but rather after he became the Secretary for Development or when he received an invitation from the administration to become the Secretary for Development, how come he did not immediately, immediately sort out um, all these um, direct or indirect interests involving the land in the Northwest, Northeast NT? Now, what we could not quite follow is for Mr. Chen or his wife and her family, these uh, local and overseas companies, who actually own these companies, especially for these four BVI companies. Mr. Paul Chen never said anything. At most, he would ask these companies to issue statements. So our suspicion is um, well-grounded and is based on a professional knowledge that uh, we cast doubt on such information. Now, I remember Mr. Paul saying before, a uh, Paul Chen said before, now my wife was a company secretary. She, she had to take care of the interests of her customers because of privacy. She was not in a position to disclose the ownership behind these companies because these are overseas companies. But then, 
as a chartered company secretary. Mrs. Chen is a professional. She knows that there are professional codes for company secretaries. As a professional service provider, she should know that uh, where there is conflict of interest or uh, alleged uh, conflict of interest, uh, she should not engage in any business with his, her, her customer. For example, when I'm the auditor of a particular company, at the same time then, I cannot go into partnership with the company in a certain business because there will be conflict of interest. So after Mr. Paul Chen explained his position to the media, I questioned whether this was truly the explanation or whether he was withholding something from us. There's another point. Mrs. Paul Chen's wife said uh, that on the 25th of July, she sold all shares of Orient Express or transferred all shares of Orient Express to her brother. The uh, transfer was stamped, stamp duty was paid, there was a contract. But that's not really the uh, crucial information we wanted. Although the transfer was stamped, well, okay, you might say $2.7 billion was a fair value. But as a professional, what we would like to know is that for this $2.7 million of funds, where did that come from? Maybe the uh, brother borrowed it from uh, Mr. Chen's wife. Or where did the funds come from? That's what we wanted to know. It's not whether the transfer was stamped, stamp duty was paid, whether there was a sales and purchase contract, or whether that's a um, timely transaction. But rather, we would like to know where the funds came from. And then the media also asked me another question. Statement Industries Limited from uh, um, August 1994 to June 2008. It was a dominant company. Now, it's a dominant company, but um, in the interim, Land uh, rental was uh, collected. You said that's for uh, protecting your land interest, and the um, rent collected wasn't much, but the law is the law. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter how much you collect, even if it's just $10. If it's not in line with the Inland Revenue Ordinance or the company's ordinance, then my suspicion is that you have breached the relevant legislation. The definition of dumb company in the legislation is that uh, during the period there are no accounting transactions. Only then could the company be declared a dormant company. It's not uh, defined by how much rent you collected. It doesn't matter if it's just $30, $50, or $60. So it's against the law. It's a breach of the relevant legislation. So perhaps in your response, um, Secretary, you could explain that to me. And may I also take this opportunity to clarify certain erroneous uh, views uh, advanced by some members. Now, some members said that this case was some months ago. Let's not pursue it further. There's no evidence. It's exactly because this case has been dragged on for several months. Now, f for me as a professional and for many members of the public, they have concern about this case. There's still so many doubts. Nothing has been clarified. We could not say for certain we're not that uh, Mr. Paul Chen, you have breached the law. No, we're just saying that we still have doubts. Then these doubts have not been cleared uh, because in the past two months there there was a summer break. It doesn't mean because there was a summer break, so we should just uh, let the case go. And then some from the pro establishment camp said uh, you wanted to invoke the powers and privileges ordinance to investigate Mr. Paul Chen. Would you not be wasting a lot of time and resources? No, we are not trying to waste time or resources. In fact, on the 20th, uh, 26th of July, the motion was passed at the panel meeting. If Mr. Chen then um, provided the information or at least appointed an independent auditor to vet the information, and then he could prove that he or his family had no direct or indirect pecuniary interest or conflict of interest, then that case would have been resolved to satisfaction in those few days. It would have been the quickest way to have resolved the matter. We don't have to wait till today. 
uh, for us to t uh, for Dr. Kwakaki to make the, take the effort to move a motion to set up a select committee to to investigate Mr. Paul Chen. Even if we're talking about investigating Mr. Paul Chen, all we're asking is that Mr. Chen please um, give us the information so, so as to um, assure the public and us. There is no need for things to develop to this stage that we have to invoke the powers and privileges ordinance. So if your fate is in your hands, Mr. Paul Chen. No one else could help you. Mr. Wu Chi Wai. Thank you, Deputy Chen. Deputy, uh, Mr. Deputy. Before Mr. Paul Chen took office, he said something along this line in relation to a motion before he took office. He said, I quote, when it comes to ex expectations of public officers, the person will have to take into account a public perception apart from uh, other issues related to conflict of interest, and as far as possible, uh, not to uh, cause any um, suspicion. So he will have to be whiter than white. The, the secretary said that when it comes to a public officer, uh, he will not be involved in any marginal cases. So even in on a principle, he cannot be found guilty. What about public perception? There are criticisms from the public against public officers. They ask of public officers to abide by the rules and to be whiter than white. All these were said by the secretary. These words are loud and clear, and it also shows how the secretary sees conflict of interest. When he took office, he was plagued by uh, subdivided flats, uh, drunk driving, and land hoarding. Perhaps objectively, there are many explanations. You forwarded the explanations, and you are not being tried in a court, but people have doubts about what you have done. Using your own words, Secretary, how can you dispel public concern and suspicion? A form an ex-financial secretary, Mr. Anthony Leung, said once, people who are high up should avoid any chance of misunderstanding that he's hold, that he has a private agenda, and if there is such suspicion, he should step down. And whether you have actually done something is secondary. It is appropriate as long as you have aroused public suspicion. The choice of Mr. Anthony Leung was to tender his resignation to C. H. Tong. His resignation was accepted, and he stepped down from his post as a principal official. When it comes to conflict of interest, in this council we have had repeated discussions looking into whether we need to use the LCPNP to conduct investigations. The pro-establishment always thought that the aim of the Pan-Democrats was to use it to degrade, to smear the relevant officials and to make things difficult for the government. But you can see, no matter how hard you try to protect the people concerned so that, they, so that there is no platform, no way for them to respond, the public will not have their suspicions dispelled. When people doubt the integrity of officials and the administration, then governance will be difficult. You can't deny that a principal official and the administration have a lot of power. 
and you need public mandate and public trust to exercise such power. But the principal officials once and again chose to hide and to avoid the issue with the help of pro-establishments when it comes to public suspicion and doubts about their integrity. They gave up the chance to make a clean breast of what happened. Why? I don't have a very I don't have a long working relationship with you, uh, Mr. Chan. But in the past year, I see that uh, Secretary, you have the heart to do something right when it comes to housing issues. In an earlier meeting, I said, when it comes to development in the NTNE, in relation to land scarcity. Difficulties in housing in construct in constructing housing units. There are huge tasks for the secretary to take up. But if you are reluctant to show us your honesty and give us the information in a good platform, you will not be able to show us your integrity. And you will not be able to convince us that you have the determination to develop NTNE, Hong Shui Q, and to provide land supply for housing. Then there will be inaction. If the government remains in inaction, the problems remain. Does the secretary want to see these problem remain un remain unresolved? And it only hinges on the secretary's choice to explain himself in a good. Committee, a committee, a select committee set up in this motion by Mr. Kwakaki. I don't have much to say, Mr. Deputy. Secretary, you should know. You set the standard. The standards were the ones I said at the beginning. Do you meet? These criteria, are you whiter than white? If you think by doing so, you have already convinced the public and that you are whiter than white, then you either think that the public are fools because these suspicions were unwarranted, or you think. That is do as I say, not as I do. Then there is another integrity issue because your words are empty. Secretary, I would like to hear your response. Can you, using the three criteria you have set yourself, that you are whiter than white? I fail to see that your account shows that you are whiter than white because your account and explanations are not made in a good committee, a committee with power, a committee that can show the public that everything is out on the table. I support Dr. Kwakaki's motion. I want to vindicate the Secretary's good name by using the LCPNP so that uh, there is a platform for the secretary to clear his own name, to vindicate his good name. Mr. Chan Kim Po, 
Thank you, Mr. Deputy. Now in society, there's this atmosphere that public officers, be they officials or electrical members, if they do not observe fully the guidelines on declaration of interest, they will be asked to step down. And even if they've made such declarations, they may be accused of lacking behind time, insufficient declaration, etc. If their reaction is too slow, they would be criticized, and sometimes they're criticized for acting like squeezing of toothpaste. And then they're asked to take care of public feelings. That's true. But different members of the public have different perceptions. So what sort of requirements are most fair? The best solution is to rely on respective government departments to spell out their own guidelines for observance. If a public officer has observed all the guidelines and requirements, even though his declaration may be inadequate, he should be given the benefit of the doubt and he should be considered as up to standard. This issue is about the land site in NT Northeast. The secretary immediately declared to the CE that interest. His wife and children no longer have any interest in NT Northeast, and the CE has proved <coughs> that that's done. In actual fact, at present in the government, there are established systems and mechanisms for declaration of interest. Public officers who have observed such rules and regulations should not be criticized. There's this question of how good this declaration system is. Before we amend these rules and regulations, we should observe them. Otherwise, uh, there will be problems if there's no declaration. But there are problems even when declaration is done. Is that fair? Is that reasonable? Some people may say that without it, an investigation, how do we know that sufficient declaration is done? But the ICAC has already started to investigate into the matter. Therefore, there's no reason for the LegCo to invoke the LegCo Powers and Privileges Ordinance to conduct an inquiry. Otherwise, we may give the public the impression that we do not trust the ICAC. If the ICAC proves that the secretary has done something wrong, the secretary will be punished. There is this question of why we do not make use of this good opportunity to select to establish a select committee to inquire into the matter to let the secretary prove himself clean. It's just like a person who claims that he's healthy. Then people ask, why don't we do a biopsy on him so as to prove that he's healthy? We must consider the pressure imposed on this person. It's just like performing a biopsy on him. So unless there are sufficient justifications, we should not invoke the electrical powers and privileges ordinance to appoint a select committee for an inquiry. It's just like what we discussed in the House Committee. We should discuss major matters like the future of our society. Unfortunately, we're still wasting our effort on internal struggle. Members of the public, old, middle-aged, young, all told me that we're spending too much energy on internal struggle. In the past, we're number one in the world in so far as our container port is concerned, but we're bypassed by Singapore. I believe very soon Shanghai will also bypass us. In Singapore, the income per capita is now almost two times ours. Why should we spend unnecessary energy on internal struggle? And more importantly, the CPG. 
is trying to duplicate Hong Kong such that when something happens to Hong Kong, Shanghai can replace Hong Kong. Even if 10 to 20 percent of business is to be grabbed from us, we'll be in danger. And eventually, we may not be able to keep our status as an international financial center. It's easy to destroy, but difficult to establish. I hope that Hong Kong people will be committed again to social establishment. Don't be too obsessed by internal struggle. Otherwise, people may say that we're only stirring up trouble. The CS already explained that the decision did not just rest with the Secretary for Development. Without further evidence to criticize the Secretary, I hope that we can look at the specifics of the anti Northeast Development Project. Don't waste our energy in internal struggle. Otherwise, we'll remain stagnant. To the Secretary, to his family members, to his relatives, this issue has imposed heavy pressure on them. And members of the media have resorted to all sorts of tracing tactics, thus disturbing his family members and relatives. They're, they have exceeded the reasonableness, the threshold of reasonableness. So I personally oppose the motion. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Lee Chagan. Mr. Chen Kim Po uh, seem to be suggesting that we're having some infighting here. But if you say that this is infighting, or internal struggle, uh, can you ex tell me why? It's easy to destroy, it's difficult to um, create. That That's true, but who is doing the damage? It's C.Y. Lung, it's Paul Chan, the secretary. Of course, uh, Mr. Chan Kin Po, I'm not saying that you have subdivided flats. Now, who is responsible for holding land? No one would like to see internal struggle if there is nothing wrong. But we need to ask who is destroying our system. Hong Kong is already very pitiful. We don't have a democratic um, society. We don't have universal suffrage. Um, from Sij Tong to Si Wai Lung, uh, throughout the terms of administration, we've seen more and more problems. Nobody wants to see these. The members from the pro-establishment camp say uh, that this is infighting. Whilst we only want to represent our people in questioning the government, you say that we should be asking questions like the free trade zone in Shanghai. So maybe we should ask Mr. Barry Zhang to come. We can stay silent, but does it mean that there is no infighting? The problem of having infighting is due to Si Lung appointing the wrong officials. So the crux of the matter is not as the Chief Secretary, Mrs. Carrie Lam, puts it, a very trivial matter. Even if land uh, is being hoarded, well, no one single official can uh, decide on um, the development. We have a system, but does it mean that um, Secretary for Development makes no decision at all? The problem is whenever a conflict of interest situation arises, now, uh, I'm not um, alleging that um, Secretary Mr. Paul Chan is intentional because we have yet to launch an inquiry. But I'm saying that if somebody is intentional in transferring benefits, then this can be done in uh, this, this can be done um, 
in private without anyone knowing? Does it mean that this system prevents anyone from transferring, transferring benefits in secret? Accountable officials, well, they have responsibilities, and civil servants, they ha they just follow the, the direction of um, of of um, principal officials. Civil servants don't understand the um, interests involved. So it's uh, really worrying. The secretary can make uh, the decisions and head the direction of development. And if um, the new northeast new territories uh, is to be developed, and there is interest uh, on the part of the secretary's families, then. We can't say beyond doubt that uh, there is no personal interest involved. If the NENT development is all about your own interest, then we can't go on with any discussion on the NENT development. We recall that at the Legislative Council, when we discussed the NENT development originally, uh, it was uh, solely about the development project. However, since the matter was uh, exposed, all the questions were directed at the secretary as to whether uh, he did it out of or he uh, promoted the development out of his own interest. It's a matter of perception and without a thorough investigation, then very easily members of the public might um, perceive it as a transfer of benefit or um, they might be very skeptical about the development project. So it is best that we have a thorough investigation. Well, some just now said that uh, the ICAC had already taken on the case and that we should not uh, mix it up with the, this select committee. We have different um, angles. The, purpose of the Electrical Select Committee is to find out the truth. The ICAC, however, is responsible for investigating into any criminal liability. So these are two different directions, and I don't agree with the Chief Secretary, Mrs. Lamb's uh, remarks that uh, this is not a very important matter because the decisions wouldn't be made by uh, one single official. The question is if the uh, if the, if there is alleged personal interest involved, and if it, this is called into question, then uh, we cannot uh, take any further steps. If we do not even make an inquiry into this matter, then the public would continue to feel that there are secrets um, unexposed. And uh, Secretary just now also said. Uh, make, make this remark. He said that because of his clumsiness in communication, he would like to apologize. Uh, I think he meant to say that originally he uh, initially he said that he uh, forgot um, he forgot it, and then he said that uh, his family uh, was uh, holding the agricultural land, and he, and then. Um, and then uh, eventually it was known that actually uh, what he meant by um, his wife's family was his son. It's just a matter of rhetoric and it, it, it gives an impression that he wasn't really trying to communicate, but rather he was hiding something. As a, a principal official and an accountable official, um, should the communication skills be uh, really so bad? I recall when you were a logical member, you used to uh, have very good communication skills. Why all of a sudden um, your skills uh, level dropped because uh, you became an, uh, 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 the secretary? And this is also the reason for um, suggesting an inquiry. And uh, you also said that declarations have been made. And in fact, the declaration was done on its own initiative in written form. And then after the incident was exposed, he said that 
he made um, he also um, made this declaration to the chief executive, and I want to clarify whether this was done verbally or not. And uh, it's just a kind of remedial um, action. So I can't accept uh, this being a declaration at all. Another point is about the companies. Uh, just now, a lot of companies' names um, were mentioned, NA, FH, etc., and many other companies, and also um, the question on BVI. Well, there are so many companies involved. Why um, are they incorporated in BVI, the British Virgin Islands? Because the um, you can't look into the uh, directorship, and uh, and again, there is no clarification on uh, the directorship whether you were actually behind uh, these companies. Of course, you can say no, but actually, nobody knows. Perhaps CY Lang, um is in fact behind the BVI company. So uh, you set up those companies in a place uh, when company register cannot be. Um, checked, so we think that the Labour Party should look into it. If you have nothing to hide, you should not be afraid of the investigation. If you have something to hide, however, then um, somebody can take the blame. However, we still have um, this unsolved case, and we already have many unsolved cases in Hong Kong, because every time we suggested an inquiry, um, the uh, we would be voted down in this council because the members from the pro-establishment camp would always protect the government. So, Secretary, you once said that uh, you should be whiter than white. However, what is happening now is you're blacker than black. And this will just go on uh, without any investigation. Does any other member wish to speak? To Mr. Low White Cock. President, this uh, motion is about um, this um, council appointing a select committee and giving it the powers under the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance to conduct an inquiry into the incident of the Secretary for Development, Mr. Paul Chen owning farmland located in the areas of the Northeast New Territories New Development Areas Project. Actually, at the House Community meeting last Friday, Dr. Kwakaki moved a motion on the same subject, and different political parties have expressed their views adequately on the matter. At the end, um, the vote was 26 to 13, and there were two abstentions. Uh, against the motion. And now, several days later, it's the same old theme being harped upon and upon. And uh, members have actually lost their appetite from this uh, harping of the same theme. And uh, members of the public also question is it the case that in this chamber we couldn't do, have uh, more important issues to deal with, like uh, people's livelihoods issues? And even if we want to discuss the matter, we have to uh, first um, sort out some basic facts and uh, principles. Otherwise, it would be uh, the, the whole discussion could be distorted. Now, the um, powers and privileges ordinance is the trump card of the, this council. It represents a limited uh, supreme power of this council, and in reality. We must not overlook the importance of the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance. This ordinance derived from Article 73 of the Basic Law. It is an important basis for this Council to conduct check and balance on the government. Um, it says here in this article that uh, the Legislative Council or its committee may summon anyone to come and give evidence or to produce uh, documents in their control. So. If um, there is an issue that uh, the majority of the public, public believes involves public interest and there is need to clarify matters, and then um, if uh, in accordance with normal procedure there is no way to conduct any in-depth follow-up, then it's only then it's, uh, uh, it's right to 
and appropriate to um, exercise this uh, supreme power. So as we consider whether we are to exercise this supreme power, we must always hold fast to this principle. Now this time round, we want to invoke the supreme power of the LegCo to inquire into the so-called land holding case of a uh, Support hand is it really necessary? At least um, from the evidence so far available, it's hard for us to arrive at this conclusion. As I said uh, at the House Committee meeting last Friday, I said 19 years ago, Mr. Paul Chen and his family bought some farmland some 19 years ago. Whether it was for investment purpose or recreational purpose, it was a lawful and proper act. And then Last December, Mr. Paul Chen declared the interest to the chief executive. He actually transferred shares directly held by his family to someone else to avoid a, a conflict of interest. So he's taken the appropriate action. And then in July this year, at a special meeting of the panel on development over several days, he we explained the case time and again. Unless there's new evidence or there's new development, and there's need for Lechko to um, investigate further. Otherwise, um, we do not support um, invoking the Legislative Council powers and privileges ordinance so lightly to um, investigate the case. Otherwise, it would be just a waste of time of this council. I think we just need to set right the some of the basic facts and the principles, and then we can avoid a lot of undue uh, uh, arguments. And more importantly, the public have high expectation of this council. They want us to spend more time and effort on issues close to the heart of people, such as people's livelihood issues and economic development. And we should uh, do something concrete for the people. Uh, Mr. Hu Xi once said that if there is um, one bit of evidence, then you say one sentence. If there are, um, when you have um, just eight uh, bits of evidence, you cannot jump to a conclusion even with that. I think that's the scientific and rational and impartial way of dealing with matters. And this council, you know, this is a solemn cham chamber here, so we must go by the same principle. That's why I'm against the motion moved by Dr. Kwakaki. Thank you. Does anyone, does any other me member wish to speak, Mr. Lam Tai Fai? Thank you. Since the Mark Chai Kong incident, Paul Chan has taken up the office as Secretary for Development. Regrettably, after he has taken office, the public has heavily criticized and has and um, has suspected that there that the secretary actually is incapable of doing his job well. Hong Kong faces serious problems of livelihood issues and housing issues. And very often it puts the public and the administration on opposing ends. And the Hong Kong SARG has already said that housing is the most important issue out of all. The public expects or hope that the secretary will be a competent one so that he will resolve housing and livelihood issues so that Hong Kong people will have a good place to live. So some members of the public do not think that uh, Mr. Paul Chan is a suitable candidate to be the Secretary for Development. That is understandable. Ever since he has taken office, uh, there is a litany of blunder. There is drunk driving. There is uh, suspected uh, involvement in SDU subdivided flats. And now, this uh, land holding. So, there is a series of integrity problems, and this affects him adversely and also adversely affect the administration. I do think that on a number of occasions when he was giving explanations is rather clumsy. Say, for example, he, says, he said that, well, uh, yes, I had uh, 
a drink, and then I drove. But I think I was not drunk. But anyone will know, even a child will know that when you've had a drink, you should not drive. And that's why people see him in a bad light, and because of a series of problems related to his integrity, his popularity popularity rating plunged, and it reached a low of uh, minus forty six percent at one point. It's just like a footballer who's seen as not very good, and then the. And then football fans start to think that、uh, he is fixing matches, matches, matches. So as soon as he stepped onto the field, he's booed.、And、the radicals said, "This you're not helping. Leave the team." And the more radical ones said, "Just leave football completely." And the footballer said. Well, I'm not fixing any matches, and I have no integrity problems, and I will give it my best to score points so that my team will win. Please trust me and give me confidence. Is it a realistic expectation? Does anyone else share his view? Well, I think、uh, Paul Chan should be pragmatic and look at everything. As it is, and you should, as soon as possible, prove your ability, prove that you have integrity, so that you can win the trust and confidence of the public, and then you can lead the development bureau to resolve housing issues. Otherwise, just step out. That itself is not a bad idea. Today, Dr. Kwakaki moved a motion to invoke. Now,、uh, LCPNP to set up a select committee. Well, he suspects that、uh, he's concealing something, and there is a integrity problem. That is a very serious allegation. From his point of view, he just wants him to step down. Well, but if you suspect someone is、um, fixing matches, fixing matches. Or、uh, there is integrity issue, then you should have evidence. But if you find that a footballer has called someone before a match, and as a result he's fixing the match, and there is an integrity problem, well, that is、um, not very safe. And if, based on this, you want to invoke the LCPNP to set up a select committee, that is not very fair to the person involved. Before we have an investigation using the select committee, we can first discuss another issue. What kind of secretary do we need for the development bureau? Of course, if it's a competent、um, secretary with no integrity problems, then is Hong Kong people's、um, blessing. Well, if it's a very com- competent. A secretary with no integrity should he be the secretary? And、uh, what about a mediocre a secretary, but with integrity? He's loyal to his country,、uh, f- to his friends, faithful to his partner, and is、um, a philanthro a philanthropist. Then do we accept this secretary as? I、uh, as ideal, perfect. So we need to first consider what kind of secretaries we want. Of course, if is a competent secretary but lies all the time and blame others and makes a lot of mistakes and there is a integrity issue, then we should consider whether that person is a suitable candidate、uh, is a suitable secretary. So first, we need to set down some criteria. Dr. Kwakaki wants him to step down. So, well, yes, if after the investigation is found that、uh, he has problems of integrity, but he is competent, should we ask him to step down? If he has 
uh, integrity, if he doesn't have uh, integrity, but he is competent, well, is he a good secretary? Well, you ask me what secretary, uh, what uh, Paul Chan is like, I think it is premature to tell. There is a term of five years, and it's only one-fifth into the term. Perhaps he's just a slow starter, and he will pick up very quickly and will be at his peak later. And it will be premature to judge that he is incompetent. But of course, uh, we have yet to see. Uh, Mr. Matheson, the uh, prospective uh, vice chancellor of Hong Kong U, said that, well, I am a quick learner. Perhaps uh, Po Chen has this characteristics um, like the prospective Hong Kong U vice chancellor, that he is a quick learner. Well, to be honest, it's very difficult to say whether he has te- integrity or not. He knows full well, because he knows full well what he has done, whether he has concealed anything, whether he has been honest, whether he has lied through his teeth, whether he has blamed others, whether he has done anything immoral. He's the only one who knows. I've just visited um, mainland China, and I read a news article saying that uh, the chairman Xi, Xi Jinping visited Hebei. He said, in order to resolve conflicts, the best tool is criticism and uh, self and uh, to be retrospect. Well, first you have to look into yourself to reflect what you have done. Well, he has dealt with a lot of things since he's taken office. So does he still have the ability to resolve issues? and problems. If not, he will be snowed under by the upcoming uh, issues and the problems that are to come, and this is not for the good of Hong Kong. Well, I have said everything, but if, if you say that I have said everything, and the only problem is that uh, you don't trust me, and you are biased, uh, you're prejudiced against me. Secretary, if you want to show that you are a good official that is difficult to come by, well, show us that you have integrity and uh, com- competence. Give us all the information about the BVIs to dispel our suspicion. Explain to us that uh, when you bought the land in uh, 90 years ago, well, it was not for recreation, because no one will believe you, because it's covered by uh, weed and vegetation. Uh, it's overgrown. So if you want a barbecue there, it will burn the whole place down. So give us an explanation from the beginning to prove to us that you have integrity and competence. Otherwise, this baggage will be too heavy for you to bear. It's difficult for us because for for me because I am labeled as a a loyalist, a loyalist. But there is no sufficient evidence showing that he has integrity problems and there is conflict of interest. But on the other hand, his explanation uh, leaves a lot to be desired. He circumvented the issue and dodged. So it is very f- difficult for us to make judgment. But I would like to tell Dr. Kwakaki, even with a select committee set up to conduct an investigation, do you think you'll really find something out? As we all know. Well, uh, there are just a few tricks to just gloss over everything. I can really not remember. I don't know. And uh, I don't understand. Well, we'll leave it for the ICAC to investigate into the matter. Well, I have known Paul Chen for a few years, and I will um, put. I will forward a bold advice, a piece of bold advice. He's committed a number of mistakes. Yes, you came from the grassroots, but you know very little 
about the grassroots. You always feel good about yourself. You thought that uh, the grassroots would accept your explanation, but as you know that uh, when it comes to compensation with the NTNE development, what you receive in terms of compensation from the land you own is very different from those received by the grassroots. You said you bought a piece of land for rec uh, for um, holiday use, but that's not how the grassroots would see it. When in the end, I hope, Secretary, you would understand. Well, in this day and age, uh, as a public officer, you are bound by the law, social, societal rules, public monitoring. You're also bound by moral, ethical, integrity, perception, and public uh, perception. So today I will abstain, but I hope that you will use the remaining term to deal, to look into, to reflect on the standard on integrity and competence. If you are entangled in certain issues, perhaps you should just avoid all kinds of misunderstanding and potential conflict. You should see things from the eyes of a public, from the grassroots, and just use simple words and a to give straightforward answers. Thank you. You, Mr. Alan Dong, Mr. Deputy, after listening to the remarks by Mr. Lam Tai Fai, I can fully understand that um, as a loyalist, um, um, one often feels uh, painful. All right, he dares not say this directly to the public that I'm um, behind uh, Mr. Paul Chan, the Bureau Director, and in order to show that uh, in abstaining there are justifications for him to do so, he could only come up with some um, reasoning that uh, nobody would understand. All right, according to what he said, uh, we have to come up with some yardsticks and so on. So what kind of peop what kind of person do we want? All right, a person with integrity but then with ability or whatever. So who should be appointed as a bureau director? And um, apparently he's saying that uh, in the circumstances it's difficult to decide. And yet, uh, despite the fact that my colleague felt that uh, it's difficult to, under to, uh, to decide, uh, but then uh, for many in a community, they find it easy to decide. They feel that uh, Paul Chen doesn't have integrity at all. And uh, Lam Tai Fai said that uh, we should give him a chance so that uh, in, the, in his remaining term of four and a, a half years to go, he should be able to prove his sort. But then it's difficult because if he doesn't have integrity or if the public of Hong Kong feel that he doesn't have integrity, then uh, whatever he does, uh, he is bound uh, to fail. Because uh, when he talks about uh, anti northeast uh, they would say that, all right, you have not explained to us uh, what's behind the BVI company. and. Uh, Let's say if he talks about a harbourfront development, as soon as he takes the seat, then people will query, all right, uh, you don't have integrity at all, and if I cannot trust you, then uh, it's a waste of time to discuss things with you. Given that situation, how would you expect uh, Paul Chen to prove his grind or prove his sort? He will always be overshadowed by the problem of a lack of integrity. So this is... Um, a mission impossible. That's why I find it difficult to understand why it's so difficult to decide why he is not able to decide whether we should invoke the Logical Pass and Privileges Ordinance to investigate into the integrity problem of Paul Chen. I find it difficult to understand his logic of not being able to support this motion. Mr. Deputy, from the practical um, public interest angle, well, Mr. Paul Chen's uh, integrity problem has actually dragged down the entire SAR government, in particular when it comes to development and uh, housing policy. The whole policy has been dragged down by him personally. That's why a few days ago when we held the press conference, I was calling upon all members, not just the Pan-Democrats. We have to make sure that justice is done. And I actually said that, uh, well, even for those uh, from the pro-establishment pro-establishment camp. 
Well, for all the accountability officials, they should all support that we should get to the bottom of the truth. And if he has no integrity problem, then um, by all means, he will be able to start afresh. And uh, that would give him the chance to prove his ability. But then, if this remains an unresolved case, then even if he embarked on this any further, he'll find it uh, difficult to make any headway. So he's dragging down the entire SAR government, and it's quite ironic that he'll not be able to um, make uh, keep things going. But then, apparently, you're saying that uh, this is the start of the session. We should have uh, talked about uh, Tianhai and also the free trade zone in Shanghai and what's the impact on Hong Kong. And we should not have spent our time on such infighting. And uh, But then, have we thought about uh, the crux of the matter, Mr. Deputy? Or Mr. Uh, all right, uh, if Paul Chan has already stepped down, and if he has done what he should have done, if he has already uh, stepped down, then it would not have been like what we are here. That is, uh, we are actually having an idling engine without getting the vehicle moving. And yet, Mr. Paul Chan has not given us uh, the details of this case. He has not uh, given us a full account. And as a result, we cannot but invoke this logical and power, logical powers and privileges ordinance um, in order to get to the bottom of the truth. So that's the reason why we have the saga. Mr. Deputy, according to the uh, to the opinion poll conducted by the Hong Kong U, well, recently they just they just uh, released the latest findings for September, and the popularity rating for Paul Chen uh, bottom everybody else, and uh, he only had a, a popularity rating or approval rating of 14%. And in fact, uh, the disapproval rating was uh, standing at uh, 60%. So he actually made record since the start of this um, poll in 2002. So this is really unprecedented. It's a record high, and whether or not uh, uh, nobody would be able to um, get that kind of result uh, in the future, nobody can tell. But then, obviously, looking at the poll findings, obviously the public do not accept his so-called explanations. They are not convinced that he's telling the truth. And if they had accepted his explanation, there would not have been this uh, minus 46% uh, approval rating. So the public are of the view that uh, Paul Chen has dodged the issue. He has not really come clean on this. And uh, in July to August this year, the Civic Party also conducted another poll. And we found that um, some 60% of the respondents felt that uh, in explaining the issue on uh, the uh, farmland, uh, Mr. Paul Chen told lies. And uh, some 64% of the respondents felt that uh, he should step down. And uh, Mr. Paul Chen's uh, family and uh, their ownership of the farmland, all right, since uh, it was exposed uh, in the press, uh, there were at least uh, seven um, points that have not been fully explained. And in order to set the record straight, why the Civic Party is in support of Dr. Kwokaki's motion to invoke the Electrical Powers and Privileges Ordinance to investigate into The incident of the um, Secretary for Development uh, owning farmland located um, in NT Northeast, uh, I'd like to set this out in order to put it on record. Number one, Paul Chen pointed out that uh, 19 years ago, when he bought in this uh, piece of land uh, in Kutong North, it was uh, for holiday purposes so that uh, his children would be able to um, go there on holidays, and uh, there was no value on this land. But then, um, as some farmers uh, pointed out uh, to the press that uh, they had never seen the Chen's family going to the farmland to have fun. Actually, on the contrary, Paul Chen 
claiming that he was representing the company and uh, he signed this uh, tenancy agreement with a farmer, and that's an objective fact. And the second area that is uh, suspicious, that is um, the company that is owning the land, uh, that is um, um, the company uh, which has uh, all right, uh, the so called uh, the statement industries are um, well sought to become a dormant company that's under uh, section 121 of uh, the company's ordinance. In other words, uh, they can um, be exempted uh, from holding an annual general meeting and also um, they could also be exempted uh, from getting an auditor to check the accounts of the companies and so on. All right, uh, but as a dormant company, there can be no business activity whatsoever. But then uh, the problem is with regard to this um, statement industries limited. Despite the fact that uh, it has already sought to become a dormant company, it continued to lease the land uh, to the farmer and therefore it was involved in commercial or business activity and it was a suspected breach of the company's ordinance and uh, hitherto Mr. Porchan has not come up with a detailed explanation on this. And the third area of suspicion is that uh, well, the anti northeast um, development plan has been mooted uh, for a long time. And uh, back in the uh, and uh, back in 2008, consultation already started. How come it was not until 2012 that uh, Paul Chen claimed that uh, he discovered that uh, well, the farmland was located in anti northeast, and as a result, uh, he tried to declare the interest uh, to Mr. C. Uh, uh, C. Y. Leung, and uh, did C. Y. Leung find it a problem? And what's his response? And also, uh, before and after 2012, um, with regard to the discussions uh, of in the exco on this, did uh, Paul Chen um, uh, re uh, retire from the uh, or did he? Uh, we refrain from the deliberation and so on. So I did ask the question. That is, uh, with regard to the verbal declaration of interest uh, to the chief executive by Mr. Paul Chan, could we have something in black and white so that uh, a document recording the details can be submitted to this council in order to be accountable to the public? But then, despite the fact that I made uh, different attempts uh, on this, uh, there was no response whatsoever. And after the chief executive, heard this uh, disclosure, did he give any instruction at all to Mr. Paul Chen? Again, there was no response whatsoever. All right, I've already set up the three areas of suspicion. And the fourth area is that uh, for statement industries holding the land, it was again owned by, held by three companies. According to the press, uh, one is um, Orient Express Holdings are holding some 37%. Another one holding 50% is Excellent Assets Limited. Another one is holding 12.5% of the company and it's uh, Fidelity Management. And the wife of Mr. Paul Chen, Freddie Hui, pointed out that um, in November 20, in, Oto in October 2012, some 37% of um, the uh, share of um, statement industries were already transferred, and um, the transaction cost uh, was two point seven million dollars. But then, uh, Mr. Hoi Po Ming, the, bro the younger brother of Ms. Hoi, uh, was only uh, discharged of his bankruptcy uh, a few years ago. In other words, um, um, well, this, as to the source of his um, capital. Uh, Mr. Paul Chen has yet to give an explanation, and also other than Orient Express holding um, statement industries and so on, they are both uh, overseas companies. And yes, uh, Freddie Hui claimed that uh, these companies were owned uh, by her family, but then according to records, these two companies had a lot to do with um, Mr. Chen and his wife, and. Um, it also has a very close link with uh, Paul and Associates Consulting Limited, which is held by Mr. Paul Chen. And yet, uh, the um, directorship of um, these two companies um, 
are, are not clear. And according to Mr. Paul Chen, his own son could also become uh, a family member of his wife, and therefore one cannot but doubt that there might be further potential conflict of interest uh, between him and these companies. And that's the fourth area of concern. And also, for many years, uh, Mr. Paul Chen and his wife have been using this uh, Paul and Associates Consulting Limited in providing consultancy service, and Mr. Paul Chen was once the major shareholder of this company. But then, what about another um, direct? What, uh, what about another director? That's um, the um, Fidelity Corporate Services Limited, and um, incidentally, it has a lot to do with um, excellent access and fidelity management, which have a lot to do with the Kutong site. And then subsequently, um, Paul Chen and uh, Excellent Access and Fidelity Management did something, and as a result, um, shares were transferred to Strategic Assets, uh, which is a company, and uh, this Strategic Assets also had a lot to do with uh, Harvest Charm owning the subdivided flats, and therefore he has been making use of these uh, overseas companies and his com and his family members, and they and he has been running business uh, that had that is in conflict with his uh, duties as the secretary for development, and uh, since most of these companies have been registered overseas, and therefore nobody can tell who the directors or shareholders of these companies are, and there is no way to tell whether or not. Uh, Paul Chan and his wife are able to be totally delinked from these companies. And uh, eventually, Freddie Hoy also issued a statement saying that uh, she owned only 37.5% of uh, Orient Express, and for the remaining uh, shares, uh, is owned by Classic Success. And uh, it also owns 37.5% of the company. In other words, Classic Success uh, has been um, running subdivided flats uh, together with uh, Mr. Chen's uh, the, the Chen's uh, couple, but then um, she said that uh, classic success is owned by a friend uh, who would like to remain anonymous. But then it could have been uh, C.Y. Leung who is behind this, and uh, all these uh, would have been sufficient for us to set up a select committee under the Legal Pass and Privileges Ordinance. These are my remarks. Does any member wish to speak, Mr. Leung Kohong, Mr. President? Now, when the company starts, please put on the microphone, Mr. Leung. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. People who said um, when you open, when you start a business, you burn fire, you play fire, firecrackers. Now, at the start, um, we see the uh, secretary putting on white clothes. As for Paul Chen, I really want to beat him up, but uh, because of the next motion. I do not want uh, to uh, shame him um, right on the spot. Whether Paul Chen should be brought to a meeting and be questioned by the um, LegCo under the Powers and Privileges Ordinance and demand him to give the truth, I think we should. The most important thing is that uh, we need the documents. We ask him for the documents. These um, uh, these loyalists uh, say that uh, the secretary uh, didn't know he would become the policy secretary 20 years ago. Um, we just frame him. Well, if you uh, pick something up in the street, uh, say you pick a purse, pick a wallet, pick up a wallet in the street, and uh, um, then you, you you tell the police. Um, it's just like Mr. Chan, um, he uh, uh, got a piece of land and he uh, was appointed by Si Wai Leung to take the place of uh, Ma Chai Kong, and he uh, told Si Wai Leung. Si Wai Leung, who is supposed to be the policeman, uh, said that uh, he just uh, picked the wallet in the street. Hence, uh, the policeman, or Si Wai Leung, uh, didn't say a word, and so he put the wallet in his own pocket. And that, mean, that does it mean that's declaration of interest and that is proper? Well, the police is wrong. The policeman is wrong in not requiring him to report to the police station. And he just put the wallet into his pocket, and suddenly he finds that he finds that that is not right, and therefore he gives uh, this uh, to the, the wallet to his brother-in-law. And 
the interest has been declared, and there is no conflict of interest, according to what they say. Uh, the loyalists are just putting up this kind of ridiculous argument. Now, a lot of you have businesses. If your employee uh, picks up a bunch of cash uh, from um, your uh, safe and then uh, told uh, his supervisor that he picked this cash uh, next to the safe and then he gave uh, the bunch of cash to his um, relative, uh, then uh, you call it declaration of interest and there is no conflict of interest and there is no bribery. Um, well, when a person has committed a crime, he might not have uh, thought about it beforehand. Even if you uh, kill somebody and said you uh, have no such intention, you still have killed somebody. Now, see, Paul Chen has just picked up a piece of land and he said he has no intention uh, to um, get uh, personal benefit from that. Well, he, he he did know. He said he didn't know that twenty years ago. He was lying. He he said that he uh, was just use it uh, for a turf, but um, he was just holding land to make profits, just like other developers. And you know that people are holding up land, they are waiting, are holding land, they are waiting for the change of land use. Of course, you didn't know beforehand C.Y. Leung would be elected. Nobody have guessed that. And you didn't know the uh, so-called new government structure wouldn't work. You really can't explain it away. The pro-establishment are setting bad examples for the children. They turn truth upside down. And there is nothing wrong about investigating into his case. Now, please uh, do not just doze off. You make more than $20,000, $200,000 per month. When, when we invoke the um, Legical Powers and Privileges Ordinance, we have to be reasonable. We have to go through formal procedures. We cannot do anything we like. But now we can um, scold people here. But if we uh, use the electoral power and privilege ordinance, we cannot do that. We have to be reasonable, and therefore we make use of that ordinance. We invoke that ordinance. You can go to the select committee and then provide your information to prove yourself. Your uh, BVI, the details of your BVI companies uh, should also be disclosed. If you say this one don't want to disclose his identity and that one doesn't want to disclose identity, then you better quit and then continue to do your subdivided flat business instead of being a senior government official. Go ahead with your property dealings without, uh, if you just quit, you, you can just quit your job. If the leader goes astray, then the followers will do the same. Now they uh, pro establishment says that uh, let us don't waste time. We have a um, break for more than two months, and the world still goes on. And some of the um, rich uh, legal members have gone uh, gone abroad and enjoy luxurious occasions, uh, luxurious vacations. The world goes on without them. Now concerning uh, Mrs. Lamb, is she doing her job? Are you just uh, friends of uh, or fans of C. Y. Leung, and therefore you uh, don't uh, need to uh, tell us. Uh, you don't need to cooperate with us. 
Now, if you are a fan of CY Leung, you are above the law. Is it the case? Shouldn't he be accountable to uh, carry lamb? And uh, when Mac Chai Wong uh, got into trouble, um, Carrie Lam said that uh, she uh, supported him. Uh, the integrity, he admitted his mistake, but Paul Chan didn't. Uh, there are too many questions. You reported to CY Leung. Then did CY Leung give you any instruction? Um, and did you, uh, you, you were also, he, he was also in business. Did uh, he call up uh, Frida Hui? Uh, or did uh, Mrs. Leung call uh, Frida Lui just like the gang of four, the uh, wives of the leaders um, uh, talk to uh, each other very often? Now, your, now, when we we check uh, the emails, say for example, in the C uh, M Long uh, case, we uh, check the uh, emails, who talked to uh, whom and who wrote to whom. We uh, knew all that. Now, just ask uh, Paul Chen to give us the documents. Probably, we don't need to um, grill him at our meetings. The government is rotten to the core. Now, you are allowed at uh, criticizing Timothy Tong because Timothy Tong uh, has stepped down. Now, if Timothy Tong is in trouble, Paul Chen uh, is also deep in trouble. And how should uh, how could he remain in his place? He lacked integrity. If he lacks integrity and he is capable, then he should better go back to his business. And I don't stop him from from getting richer and richer. There is problem of his uh, integrity. I think you see, um, Paul Chen is not too bad. He is afraid of his wife. He, uh, his wife makes decision, makes all the decision, and then he follows her instructions. Now, now. And uh, have you uh, brought uh, your wife to uh, do the job for you? Of course not, because the government doesn't pay her. Now, if uh, I don't believe that um, Paul Chen is very uh, greedy, but you should. You should uphold integrity. You shouldn't embezzle public money. Now, even if um, even if we are good friends, if I know he uh, embezzles public money, then I will not let him off the hook. If you do not support invoking the Legal Powers and Privileges Ordinance, you need to explain to the people of Hong Kong why you don't support that. We need evidence. Now, what are the details uh, behind the company? Who is the invisible person behind the company? Whether C. Y. Leung has given any instruction? Whether Barry Chang uh, was involved? They are all the fans of C. Y. Leung. Now, um, well, um, um, the uh, judge said that you caused the uh, suspicion. You cause suspicion of other people, uh, therefore you will not be awarded costs, even if you uh, win the case. Now the uh, government or the um, government, the, the um, chief uh, prosecutor said that uh, there was no evidence, but um, there was the um, selling of uh, property. In August, by an exco member, uh, but uh, the additional measures were um, given were only introduced later. And server said that uh, that was not um, there was not enough evidence. Now in August, when Mr. Lam wanted to uh, sell the uh, property, why then uh, before the uh, launching of the additional measures against property markets, they uh, he added uh, the commission in order to uh, speed up the sale process. <laughs> so, 
Same for Barry Chang. Uh, he was so so uh, suspicious. He borrowed money uh, from many people, and he didn't even uh, can't pay. Um, he even uh, couldn't pay the rent. And then he was recommended by Paul Chen to continue to be the chairman of the URA. And then uh, when I criticize your decision, um, Anna Cheng uh, interrupted. In fact, um, you were biased. You just ignore the advice of Carrie Lam. The fans of CY Leung form a uh, group within the government, and when they had a when they have any problem, they go to CY Leung to seek help. Paul Chen, I ask you, what instruction did CY Leung give to you? Uh, did he ask you to sell the interest to your brother-in-law? Did he uh, teach you how to answer the questions of Legio members? I think the loyalists should ask uh, Po Chen to produce the documents, to produce the evidence. Ask him to uh, provide the evidence to keep harmony. Give him, uh, ask him to give all the documents, all the emails. Are you, uh, will you? Uh, do you get it? If you don't, if you can't get it, don't stand in our way to investigate into the case. It's really uh, ridiculous. It's really absurd. Look at this. And um, this uh, should be kicked out of the chamber. Uh, Chairman, I know that in your heart you prefer to invoke the electrical powers and privileges ordinance. If you uh, just remain silent, you agree. You agree in silence. Everybody uh, shares the same view. The Chairman remains silent, and he agrees with long hair. Kerry Lam should give an answer. If you remain silent, you give your consent in silence. Mr. Chen Chi Chin, Mr. President, just now some pro establishment members said that on the first day of the new legislative session, we should not discuss invoking the Electoral Powers and Privileges Ordinance to inquire into Paul Chan. That's true. Paul Chan should have stepped down out of his own initiative in July this year. In overseas jurisdictions, officials in similar circumstances would have stepped down much earlier. Then we don't need to invoke the PNP ordinance to inquire into him. And just now it said that a healthy person needs not go through a biopsy to check whether or not he's in good health. I think not even Paul Chan can claim that he's absolutely in good health. He may not have contracted any terminal diseases. But dare you say that you're 100% healthy without any disease? There are these shortcomings in people and institutions. So the ECS should not turn a blind eye to the present situation saying that there are no problems. Everybody is healthy. Every system is healthy. I'd like to present a big award to the Secretary. Last week, with the protection of the pro-establishment camp in the House Committee, he escaped. I think we are to have a recurrence today. That will be tragic. Dr. Pokaki's motion will be vetoed. That's from the viewpoint of the public. Of course, on the part of Paul Chan and the administration, they will think that they have overcome another hurdle. But uh, our determination and action will not stop just because of the rejection of this motion on PNP ordinance. We must not give people the impression that when a bureau director makes a serious mistake, so long as he insists to stay on, he'll be able to stay on in peace. Now, let me say to the pan-democrats here, we must think about 
a certain scenario. When this motion is vetoed, what follow-up action is to be taken? If the motion is to be vetoed and we stop work, the pro-establishment camp will tease us, saying that we are trying to canvass votes uh, and gain publicity by way of this motion. So we must not stop with our action. People power will continue with our effort. We've already moved a motion to move that Paul Chan steps down, and we've been given approval to proceed with that motion. Even the pro-establishment camp wants Paul Chan to step down because we have more members in the pro-establishment camp, and a member's motion has no binding effect on the administration. But this motion does have a binding motion on the administration. We had another motion on CY Leung and another motion for PNP ordinance. Only five members spoke then, and that was vetoed. Today, we have at least 23 members spoken. So please continue with a full effort, both within and without this chamber. We'll continue with our effort. We may block applications, including applications for funding from the Development Bureau. Only by doing so, we can add pressure, political pressure, on Po Chan and even Si Wai Lung. With more political pressure, we may force Po Chan to step down. It's just like uh, the tragedy in the Philippines. The Filipino government has refused to apologize. It's because the SARG has not exerted pressure on the Filipino government. So we must exert the greatest pressure on the SARG to force Po Chan to step down. However, earlier I heard some pan Democrats say that they would not block policies and funding applications from the Policy Bureau. We should differentiate this incident with others. We're trying to ask Paul Chan to step down, but not to block policy implementation. Paul Chan is the biggest culprit in all the blunders of the SARG. Members of the public would like him to step down as early as possible. If we want the SARG to operate smoothly, the, poly the Development Bureau to operate smoothly, the whole of Hong Kong to operate smoothly, Pa Chan should step down. I hope that those who disagree with us but support this motion, and if the motion is rejected, they should try their very best to think of other methods, or even better methods, both within and without this chamber, to continue to chase after Paul Chan. In this chamber, People Power will continue with this effort to cause Paul Down to step down. We'll petition to the associations of accountants. We won't give up any opportunity to cause Paul Chan to step down within and without this chamber. Mr. Albert Chan, it seems that the relevant bureau directors are here and we don't have enough members here. Please do a quorum count.
。陳志全議員。Mr. Chen Chi-chun. Thank you, Mr. President. Here, I'd like to reiterate that peop the People Power will continue to, con to with this effort within and without this chamber to cause Paul Chan to step down. He's not, if he had not declared his interest in Ku Tong, he might be sitting on huge proceeds. As a result of the anti northeast development project, he said that he had sold off all his shares in statement industries. In fact, he should have reported such as such much earlier when he was asked by journalists whether or not he had been involved in illegal leasing of the Kutong site. He said that that's too long ago. He could not explain why his brother in law. Could hold shares in Ku Tong after bankruptcy. He said that it was not he himself that was involved, so he could not answer. After this incident, members of the public can no longer trust the memory of the secretary. He is no longer trustworthy in the minds of Hong Kong people. How many? How much more information he cannot divulge to us? He should not oppose a fairer, more independent, and more recognised platform for him to explain everything clearly to us. Therefore, I do not understand why just now the secretary was canvassing for votes among members to veto the motion. In fact, his declaration was made to Siwai Leung. Siwai Leung said, "There's no problem," and. That's made verbally only. Then he said it's all right. And just recently, we had these guidelines for the CE in handling potential cases of conflict of interest. Blah blah blah. The title is too long. But then, this was only uploaded to the CE website as one of the hyperlinks in August this year. If you can spot it, it's your luck. Otherwise, pure bad luck on your part. He, well, the secretary said that he had observed the guidelines. In fact, that's the RQ spirit only. There are loopholes in the systems. We must conduct an inquiry. If the public does not even have the platform to inquire into the matter, it's too bad. The motion will be vetoed. Will be creating another world-class bad official. Mr. Paul Chan was in business. We said we want a safe city, but Mr. Paul Chan was involved in drink driving. We're talking about more land sites, but Paul Chan has been hoarding land. This motion is actually a motion to drive out the devil. In fact, I can see. That、uh, there is a devil in the hearts of the pro-establishment members. In your hearts, you really want to kick out Po Chan. You don't want to be in the same sinking boat as he. He should not be dragging the feet of the SARG. However, if they support the motion or say something that. Are inhuman, then they would be asked by the leftist newspapers to reflect deeply on themselves. Some pro-establishment members did say something human. Oh, Lam Tai Fai is away. He said that Po Chen is divulging information, just like squeezing of toothpaste. Po Zhe did say that there are loopholes. In the declaration mechanism, but I believe、uh, there is this devil in their hearts. Even they will be vetoing the motion. We've heard the pro-establishment camp. There are super fans supporting Po Chan. Other members dare not say anything in support of him. A motion was carried. In the ratio of eleven to seven, to ask Paul Chan to step down, well, 
members were saying that the PNP ordinance is a supreme power that we should not readily invoke, and it's not yet opportune for us to invoke that power. Let me drive away that devil from your hearts. Xi Jinping said something about universal suffrage. He said we must observe the basic law. On the mainland, they have this very serious exercise to combat corruption. We now have less rich people from the mainland to buy our goods. So, it's in compliance with the situation on the mainland to drive away Po Chan. But then there can be a devil in individual officers, in individual legal members, but not in the CPG. So, Drive away the devil in your heart and support this motion to kick out Paul Chan. Does any other member wish to speak, Mr. Albert Chan? Mr. President, just now Lang Kuo Hong was behind me and he reminded me uh, that I should say shame on Paul Chan. And this is one of the reasons why I need to support this motion. Mr. President, many members already talked about the um, interest of uh, Paul Chan, and I've used this placard before. I'm using it uh, to save the environment, uh, stop the divided flat and drink driving, Paul Chan, land hoarding, and uh, get, ha having personal gain. And uh, he's involved in a lot of crime, so shame on him, and he has brought shame to the whole government. The highest echelon of the government, uh, that's uh, 689 CY Leung, and uh, because of the series of mistakes committed, we've seen people or officials leaving the government. This shows the low popularity of this administration. And the whole team of accountable officials fe feel shameful to be part of the team. They find it hard to account to themselves and to their own conscience. Now, Mr. President, I'd like to focus on two questions. The first one is about the governance of the administration. And the, import and the importance of accountability. Well, nowadays fewer people talk about these principles because after the uh, Communist Party rule Hong Kong, it's it has become part of the um, ideology of the Hong Kong government's administration to. Um, get personal gain uh, because of his official position, etc. It's really outrageous and uh, worrying to see that uh, Hong Kong um, has uh, adopted the style of the Communist Party. Uh, more than a decade ago, I already raised this point in the Legislative Council. After reunification, Hong Kong would gradually become one of the major cities in China. That's not uh, only about the economy, um, about um, the uh, administration's governance and livelihood, etc. Hong Kong will very soon um, be um, adopting the communist style. And this is, and Xi Wailang and Ho Chan are the two top figures uh, representing this. They should be given a red medal. Mr. President, on the importance of accountability, I will quote from uh, two uh, persons, one Thomas Paine, and, uh, who was a very famous American thinker and revolutionist. He was one of the founding brothers in America. And uh, he had huge influence on the um, f uh, f um, on the philosophies of uh, the uh, f of uh, the of America. 
being established. The, um, he said in a book that the right of uh, the, called the right of man, he gave a quote, meaning that in the whole political system, when, where there is no accountability um, by officials, then the whole group of officials are not trustworthy. This is the designing principle of the three, uh, the, the separation of the three powers. There must be accountability. In Hong Kong SAR, according to C.H. Tong's design, initially there was the concept of accountability. Of course, we uh, all understand um, how incompetent C.H. Tong was in terms of governance, in terms of um, his um, governing abilities, well, he was very, um, he did poorly, and we all understand that. But still, he uh, had conscience and he was committed. So during his administration, there were principal officials uh, repeatedly. Uh, leaving the service and making apologies. Now, they may not agree with the um, philosophy of governance. He might have appointed the wrong officials to their positions. And uh, some uh, who had affiliation with the Communist Party were able to be appointed as principal officials or directors of bureaus. But, uh, but those officials, including uh, Anthony Lung and Regina Yip, uh, etc., and also um, E.K. Young, uh, resigned because of um, certain mistakes or uh, fault on their personal conduct. Anthony Lung resigned, but the circumstances well, the circumstances of the resignation um, were similar to Paul Chan's situation. However, Paul Chan's uh, wrongdoings are much more serious. He has committed three crimes, subdivision of flats, drink driving, and uh, land hoarding. So basically, the series of acts of Paul Chan has caused the loss of confidence in the general public um, in the Development Bureau. Paul Chan has committed um, mistakes that are much, much more serious than Anthony Lowe. And Anthony Lowe uh, apologized and stepped down. And yet Paul Chan is so shameless, he's still playing around with words and abusing the um, administrative uh, procedure. Therefore, you can see that he has got the lowest popularity ever. And in fact, Anthony Leung um, stepped down because of his persistent low popularity. Whereas for Paul Chan, he's involved in subdivided flats, he's involved in drink driving, and he is uh, shameless enough not to apologize and step down. And for officials abroad uh, in countries like Australia and uh, other countries, we have countless examples of officials resigning because of offenses like drink driving. So Paul Chan is uh, the most shameless official ever. If you also take into account examples in other countries, Now, on the point of resignation, and uh, Diana Woodhouse, a scholar um, st um, studying into the resignation of ministers in the UK, did a research. Uh, she pointed out the relationship uh, or the importance of resignation um, in and governance. She said that 
resonation ensures that um, the uh, morality of governance can uh, continue to exist, meaning that if an official refuses to resign, um, the uh, morality of governance and the value, value of governance that would be gone. And this is important. If an official, due to um, some wrongdoings, uh, refuses to resign, then this will cause uh, the morality of governance um, to be called into question. This will cause the, um, the integrity to be called into question. The moral values um, and the morality of governance, well, it's very important. So why? That is why, uh, if an official tells lies or commits wrongs, uh, he should resign because this reflects the um, value of governance. However, in CY Learns administration, there is no moral. Uh, there are no morals at all. Well, just like um, the um, loss of morality under the uh, Co Communist Party's rule uh, for 64 years. That means if you have power, uh, you can be uh, corrupt, you can do whatever you want, you can abuse the system. This is the influence uh, that the Communist Party is bringing to Hong Kong. And Paul Chan is showing us that this kind of influence that have been brought to Hong Kong can uh, can be tolerated. The, these um, are the uh, bad influences. Now, coming back to the plight of um, the civil service over uh, the past few years. Well, even the slightest mistake on the part of a civil servant would cause him to be prosecuted. Um, an officer from LCSD uh, ble uh, borrowed money, um, some just some $500, $300 or so, just for grocery shopping, and yet uh, he got prosecuted and convicted. And lastly, the uh, the the magistrate um, accepted his um, unconditional discharge, accepted his his uh, explanation, and uh, granted an, an unconditional discharge. However, now the administration is very harsh on the uh, lower ranks of the civil service, and yet they're protecting or harboring uh, senior officials. The officer only borrowed two hundred dollars, and yet the ICAC prosecuted uh, the staff, and uh, and uh, and there was another frontline officer from the Department of Health who um, visited a Chinese medical practitioner, and that practitioner was subject to the ICAC investigation, and he was uh, suspected of uh, using a false uh, medical chit, and. Uh, and uh, he was asked uh, to uh, be to be suspended from service. Um, so you can see uh, the pressure faced by civil servants. I have this uh, pile of documents showing um, the different cases, and uh, some are being dealt with by the complaints office of the um, of the uh, of the legislative council. Well, there is a case in which the money was used in 1997 to buy a flat, and then um, the the and then because almost 40 percent of his salaries were spent on um, buying a flat and pay for mortgages, it exerted immense pressure on his uh, work, and uh, then he was forced to leave the service. There was no prosecution. There was no crime involved. Uh, it was just an internal investigation uh, in the police, and he was um, therefore ordered to uh, re retire uh, prematurely. And there were also uh, there was also a TV show showing um, the uh, police officers who were asked to retire early, and uh, they suffered a lot. And yet, Paul Chan can continue to. Um, reap the benefits and to get paid by public money to be 
this daydreaming official. What about the 170,000 civil servants? How do they see this uh, secretary? What about those who had been subject to disciplinary action, those uh, in the lower rank of the civil service, well, um, uh, who had been subject to uh, pay cuts? Uh, Mrs. Carrie Lam, Chief Secretary, uh, is here. You are the leader of this of this 170,000 civil servants. How can you explain to them that uh, the uh, uh, Paul Chan enjoys uh, these uh, special privileges, whereas uh, lower ranks of the civil service are subject to these uh, harsh treatments? So we're going to um, resort to all means. We're going to. F uh, object to all the policies uh, under Paul Chan. We don't. Um, we won't allow the uh, communist influence to continue to exist in Hong Kong. We don't. Uh, we won't allow the corrupt uh, ideology to uh, persist in Hong Kong. Does any other member wish to speak? Dr. Helena Wong. Thank you, President. The Democratic Party supports the motion moved by Dr. Kwok Ka Ki. That is, we should invoke the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance to conduct a thorough inquiry into the Secretary for Development, Mr. Chen Mao Po and uh, his owning of farmland in the northeast NT. President, just now many members explained why uh, the motion ought to be supported. Uh, Mr. Ellen Leung listed out seven points of doubt. Uh, President, it's true that the public still harbor a lot of doubts. Now, Chief Secretary, you were the Secretary for Development before. No one ever questioned uh, your integrity, maybe because uh, you were particularly sensitive and smart. You knew that when you were the Chief Secretary for Development, you ought to make sure you had nothing to do with uh, land interests, land, you know, subdivided flats, um, um, investment in land and so on. And the public knew very well that you owned no properties in Hong Kong. But now you are the Chief Secretary for Administration, and the person who uh, succeeded you, Secretary for Development. I hope you will tell us this person, the Ch Secretary for Development, he himself and his family and uh, other relatives related to his family members, and there are others um, running companies here locally or uh, registered overseas if they are, have a direct or indirect interest in any p development project. Is it the case that before the person assumed the post, um, there should have been thorough investigation that person shouldn't have been installed in the post in the first place? Anyway, we've made a mistake. We have now appointed um, Paul Chen as the Secretary for Development, and then he immediately uh, distanced himself from I don't know whether you would call that bad debt or his um, smart investment in those days. Now, of course, um, the policies he is to decide on is not uh, uh, his, uh, just for him alone to decide on. But still, the public would have no trust in any decision made by this secretary being impartial and fair. Now, we have a lot of questions. We've raised these questions at the um, meetings of the panel on development. We even moved to motions. Maybe Mr. Chen believes that he's uh, answered many of these queries. But um, what we can see today is, obviously, that um, many of his answers have not been convincing. For instance, the Ku Tong farmland case. According to Mr. Paul Chen and Ms. Frida Hui, the wife of Mr. Paul Chen, they've uh, issued a statement. They said that they did own a um, piece of farmland in Ku Tong uh, through State uh, Industries Limited. They own 37.5% of the land. 
And then last year, the relevant interests in the Kutong farmland plot were transferred to another person also surnamed Hui, Hui Ka Lun. Hui Ka Lun is the brother of Mr. Chen Mao Po's wife, so is again a connected party. So the people, the public are asking, Soka, you are transferring interest from one person to another person, and all such transfers or uh, transactions, are they um, genuine transactions or are they um, fake transactions? Are uh, there actual tra um, ch change of hands of money? And even if, um, say, through banks uh, payments been made, uh, people have doubts. Because um, Hui Kalun, according to report, uh, was bankrupt in 2002. The uh, bankrupt order was only released in 2006. And after he bought the farmland, he did not move to live there. So how come all of a sudden he could come up with um, such a large sum of money, $2.7 million? Now he's uh, living in um, South Horizons. The unit was bought by the wife of Mr. Hui Kalu, Madam Ma, uh, for a price of uh, over $5 million. There's still a mortgage outstanding. So he, this doesn't seem that he has a lot of cash. So where did this um, $2.7 million come from? Was it a bank loan? Or was there a 1% possibility? Uh, was there a possibility or even a 1% possibility that uh, Chen Mao, uh, uh, Paul Chen and his wife gave this um, uh, person $2.7 million and you will own, hold the land on my behalf and, and when I am no longer the Secretary for Development, you will give me back the land. So these remain questions that won't go away. And this is not the only doubt. There are many other doubts. Now, Statement Industries Limited again because it's so closely related to the Secretary. So we want to find out more about it. Statement Industries Limited has a web of uh, connections with uh, three other companies that I don't follow. I couldn't follow it. I don't know if even you could follow all that. Now, there are three uh, shareholding companies related to Statement Industries Limited. One uh, of them is uh, Orient Express. is uh, related to your wife, Frida Hui, and your son, Chan Tin Xin. And uh, Orient Express holds 35.7.5% of statement industries, but the one holding, uh, be, being the largest shareholder, excellent assets. And who are the uh, shareholders of excellent assets? We want to know. It's not because we're curious, because we want to make sure whether there are interests involved. But unfortunately, the excellent assets is an overseas company, and we could not uh, look into that company. And who are the shareholders? Uh, is it you, pa Mr. Paul Chen, or your wife, or your wife's family, i.e. your son? Now, there's no way for us to find out unless you come clean yourself. You um, do an affidavit and uh, disclose all the information. Have you done that? No, you haven't. You said you're more than happy to, uh, dis uh, to gi give an account, but uh, these are doubts that have uh, lingered on. And there's another company, Fidelity Management, it holds 12.5% of Statement Industries Limited. And how is Vitality related to Statement Industries in substantial terms? Again, this is something the public have no information of. And then these three companies, in relation to Mr. Paul Chen and your wife, uh, Frida Hui, at one point, uh, worked very closely together to manage two other companies. That is the Fidelity Corporate Services Limited and the Paul and Associates Consulting Limited. So for all these companies, what was the web of connection among them? And that's why that leaves a lot of doubts in the minds of members and um, members of the public. Now you are the... Uh, important person in charge of um, land housing and land development. So this group of companies, uh, are they all actually owned by you through various uh, vehicles? Now, if you say that you have no connection with these companies, then 
Um, under the powers given by the Legislative Council Powers Privileges Ordinance to the Legislative Council, you would then um, explain all these um, doubts in one go. And if uh, you're innocent, then people will um, vindicate you. But now you are asking members not to support the motion, not to support the investigation. Are you saying that the Legislative members should just sit on our hands in future whenever there are questions about um, conflict of interest? Legislative members should just brush them aside, even for an important post like the Secretary for Development. Are we asked to just um, not bother about it? Shall we? Are you going to ask the pro-establishment camp to blindly support um, the government and the, sec the Secretary for Development? Definitely, the pan-democratic camp would not support you. It's not about individuals. We are trying to maintain the integrity of a clean government. And we want to protect the public credibility of the government because if you cannot command public credibility, there's no way you could stay on as the Secretary for Development. Because if you stay on as the Secretary for Development, then there won't be any development at all in the Northeast NT. President, um, if uh, any of us have noted latest uh, poll findings. I'm sure uh, Paul Chen would uh, be following that. The uh, support rating of Paul Chen, uh, some members mentioned it already. In September, the net value of uh, his popular rating was uh, minus 46 percent. It's not even zero. It's below zero. It's minus 46 percent. That's some um, an astoundingly low figure. Unfortunately, our C also has a popularity rating of uh, minus um, 30 percent or so. Uh, it, it says uh, it's recently his rating has gone up a little bit. And there's another secretary, um, adding. Mm, it's also below his popularity rating is also below zero. I don't know who can help you to bring you back to the positive figure. And then there was a recent Hong Kong U poll. There was a question in the poll. If tomorrow you were to vote, would you support um, Paul Chan staying on, or do you think he should be removed, or are you going to abstain from voting? That was the uh, poll Conduct, opinion poll conducted by the Hong Kong University between the 3rd and the 5th of September this year. 1,000 members of the public were interviewed, and only 14.1% of those polled supported you staying on as the Secretary for Development. And those who think you should be removed as the Secretary for Development, 60%. Abstention, 25.9%. So I think the views of the public are clear-cut. Uh, there's been a vote. It's more than clear that uh, people think you are no longer fit to stay on as the secretary. In that case, how can you possibly hang on? If you insist on not resigning, then the uh, if you stay on and you are still able to perform your duties and uh, so that there will be development in the North East NT, then you have to subject yourself to the inquiry under the Powers and Privileges Ordinance. Or on uh, that forum, you must disclose all interests of yourself, your family and um, family members, you know, both uh, involving the local companies and the overseas companies. We want to make sure that whether there's any conflict of interest or impropriety on the part of public officers. That's why I speak in support of the motion. Mr. James Tian. Mr. President, last week, last Friday, in the House Committee, we had a discussion on this issue. Last time, we on I only had two minutes. I stated my stance, but I did not go into detail. And today, now I'd like to say, on behalf of the Liberal Party, that uh, we keep an open mind uh, in relation to setting it in relation to the setting up of a select committee to conduct an investigation. On a number of occasions, we have uh, supported uh, the motion to start to set up a select committee. A few months ago, on behalf of the Liberal Party, I um, 
made a proposal to look into the matter relating to Mr. Barry Jung and the SFC, the Securities and Futures uh, Commission. When we look at a matter, we look at whether it is worth an investigation, what can be unearthed, and whether with what is unearthed it's uh, serious enough to warrant further action. And in this matter, Ms. Dr. Kwoka Ki said in his motion to inquire into the incident of the Secretary for Development, Mr. Paul Chan, owning farmland located in the areas of the N. ENT new development area project and related issues. So it's very specific. Is the secretary Mr. Chan um, NTNE uh, new territories uh, north east and owning farmland? So my speech will be focused on a number of points, uh, unlike my fellow legislators who have spoken on general issues. The Liberal Party noticed that this matter took place uh, over 10 years ago. It was in 1994, and it was an investment made by him, uh, made by him, his wife, and his wife's family. If 19 years ago uh, his family member made a decision and that person could see into the future that he would hold a, an important position and benefit from this decision, I think, wow, that person is has superpowers. I don't think that at the time um, Mr. Paul Chan had the um, foresight to see that he would be the secretary. And in the last term, Mr. Chan was a legislator. Now he is the secretary. Well, it's a complicated uh, matter. He supported CY Leung to be the um, CE candidate, and at that time the CE wasn't CY Leung. And the first thing when CY when CY Leung took o o the office is to try to bring about a restructuring of the government. He had in mind Mr. Paul Chan to be the CS4 Deputy um, Financial Secretary, but his plan fell through, and the post of a Deputy FS could not be created. And then the former Secretary for Development, Mr. Mat Chai Kwong, for his own reasons, resigned. So out of fluke, Mr. Paul Chan became the Secretary for Development, so I think that he could not be able to foresee 19 years ago that by making an investment he would be able to benefit because he will be the Secretary. We noticed that in relation to the NTNE, New Development Areas a Project, it was not a grand plan hatched by CY Leung or Po Chen or Mrs. Kerry Lam, who was the then Secretary for Development. After 1997, when C Mr. CY Sik Tong was uh, the Chief Executive, there was already this idea to develop NTNE. So does it mean that he could see that it would happen in the future and he would benefit from it. The Liberal Party thinks that that is not possible. And in relation to profiting from the farmland, that the prices has increased from just a, a dozen um, dollars a square foot to over a thousand a square foot, well, that is a decision made by the ex uh, made under the existing compensation Mechanism is not a decision of the secretary. I notice that is not the case that uh, Mr. Chen has singled out the area where he owned land and suggested a higher compensation rate. 
and instead, actually, the going rate for that area is 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 lower than others. It shows that in relation to the NTNE new NDA project is not related to something he did in the past. If we invoke the LCPMP, of course we would like to uh, find something out and then move a motion of no confidence. Well, we, you don't expect that uh, you will find an investigation uh, to clear his name. And the Liberal Party is of the view that even with an investigation, even if we found something out, uh, it doesn't warrant further action. Say, for example, asking him, to, uh, removing him from office, or to criticize him. I saw, I see from uh, minutes of meeting of last year in relation to subdivided flats, the Liberal Party supported the motion. It was a motion um, moved by Mr. Raymond Wong, and it said clearly that. It was related to uh, the SDU business of the Secretary for Development, and we supported the motion. So today, it, we think that it is not related to drunk driving or the uh, SDU business. This is about the NTNE owning and the farmland owned. Well, I did not know him. Perhaps the legislators of the last term knew about him, but I wasn't there, so I did not know him. It's uh, only when he became the secretary and I, a legislator, that I start to know about him. And I was the only one in the Liberal Party in the panel on development. So uh, that's why I saw him more. And I've dug out some minutes of meeting on the 7th of January. And um, there was a meeting, and all the way till the 31st of July, there were 15 meetings, and the secretary attended 13 of them out of the many secretaries. Mr. Chan had quite a high um, attendance rate. I hope other secretaries would attend 13 out of 15 meetings. Of course, some people would criticize him for just being present because he did not do anything. Well, at least no one know whether he has done anything. But he was there to listen to views of legislators. Uh, there are leg legislators from the functional constituency and from the geographical constituency. We gave our views, and he's th he was there to listen to to them. And at the beginning, when it comes to NTN E N D development, it was about industrial um, development. And later, the plan changed uh, to um, PPP, public private uh, partnership, because it may expedite the implementation of the plan. And we're now facing a huge problem, housing. It's difficult to find land. We have to find land no matter what it is and um we try we thought of, we considered other ways say for example reclamation along the um along the uh, waterfront and also to build an artificial island we expressed our views we think that uh, we lack hotel rooms and we have high rental of um shopping uh, of commercial space and also there is a high rental in office space so we need more land and the solution lies in swift identification of land for development if we get bogged down on something the secretary did 19 years ago it will not be good for hong kong's future development it will not be good for hong kong's development in the five in the coming five or ten years, if it, if he's plagued by this matter, if it weighs over his head, he will not be able to put his mind fully onto the matters at hand. Well, this year, we could not have the uh, gourmet uh, um, festivals in the usual location, and now we have the Kai Tak cruise terminal, and if the plans or took off or take off, well, a lot of the legislators will have retired by then. 
So you see, everything takes a long time. If we drag our feet, if we let it um, delayed, you see, in China, everything goes very. Everything happens very quickly. Tianhai takes a very short time, and there is also the Shanghai um, business uh, district. I believe that in uh, there is the free trade zone, and I believe that uh, if we remain inactive, then we will be taken over. Well. There will be indeed 50 years of no change, and this is something that we don't want to see. I said that uh, the secretary was rather industrious. On the last uh, few meetings, that is the 15th, uh, 25th, 26th, 30th, and the 31st of uh, July, there were public hearings about the NTNE development. There were 48. 102, 77, and 56 deputations attended. The secretary was there the whole time. Of course, I will be in and out, maybe going to the toilet, but he was more or less there the whole time. So he was quite devoted to it. And we think that we will not support any uh, motion to condemn him or motion of no confidence, even with an investigation. So the Liberal Party will object to this motion. Dr. Kenneth Chen. Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, I'd like uh, the Secretary to raise his head to take a look at this. All right, many people have quoted uh, different opinion polls and uh, the findings, and I've also tried to collate some information. This is the um, career development for Mr. Paul Chen since uh, taking office. Uh, this is uh, his popularity rating. All right, uh, there might have been ups and downs, uh, but then most of the time um, the rating was um, negative. Since uh, 2012, uh, 27 percent, and then in March this year is negative or minus 29 percent, and then. By March 2013, minus uh, 20, minus 24 percent, minus 28, and then slightly up, minus 27, and then by July 2013, it dropped to minus 45, 46 percent. With such a career line, what does it show? What does it represent? And also against that backdrop, when we debate um, the issue here, do we accept um, the motion moved by Dr. Kwakaki from the Civic Party? That is, we should invoke the powers under the LCPNP ordinance to set up a select committee to investigate into Mr. Paul Chen and uh, his suspected um, interest in anti Northeast uh, NDA. So I think uh, there is um, a web of. Um, links here, and uh, without the pro-establishment camp here, well, we would have thought that uh, we have plucked something from the from the uh, thin air, and uh, we have suffered from psychosis. But then, it shows that uh, if it's the wish of the majority of the people in Hong Kong, if they all share these sentiments, and if they feel disappointed uh, towards uh, Mr. Paul Chen, more would uh, feel angered because uh, they think that he should not stay in, in his post. And uh, even with the uh, strongest uh, policy uh, in the world, uh, however hard he tries to identify land um, in anti northeast uh, to provide housing, but then if he is the least uh, or most unpopular member of the administration, then have you ever thought about uh, how this is going to affect um, the SAR government is not about um, how hard we try to keep him in his post or retain him. We should have resorted to different ways to encourage him to step down. President and colleagues, just now Mr. Lam Tai Fai tried very hard to talk about um, our expectations um, on the bureau director. Do we want to do we want somebody 
with high score and um, high ability or do we want to see different combinations? Well, those from the pro-establishment camp might have worked very hard to divert the attention or they might have tried to do something about it um, um, in the circumstances so that they might be able to come up with some justi justifications to uh, keep him or to come to his defense. But then, do you not feel that um, when we discuss this issue, we are all actually put in a very difficult position? In fact, uh, we have not been able to tell the truth. And sometimes uh, we might sound as if uh, we are actually praising him, but then at the same time, um, it sounds like uh, we are criticizing him. The reason why they have been put in such difficult position, all right, um, for a speech uh, lasting for slightly more than 10 minutes and uh, we will have to put in so much, all right, uh, we will have to commend you or praise you at times and yet uh, we also have to criticize you at other times. So why are we put in this position? That's because, uh, or, or is it that uh, they are trying to tell the truth or are they trying to cover up what they really think about him? Well, members of the public, colleagues and the president, I'm sure we all would like to know that in Hong Kong, all right, are we trying to rule by lies or are we trying to rule by truth and uh, conscience? Well, when Paul Ch Mr. Paul Chen um, took office, in fact, he was faced with this integrity issue. It's not just about um, his running the sub subdivided flat business. It's about uh, Mr. C. Y. Leung. During the election campaign, he was involved um, or he was caught in this uh, 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 unauthorized building structures or works uh, scandal. So it was uh, very much focused on him personally. And if we try to analyze the situation, we can look at it from two perspectives. Number one, as many colleagues have said, all right, uh, it happened some 19 years ago. Who would be bothered to remember everything? All right, 19 years ago, Paul Chen did something, or a few decades ago, how would Paul Chen have known that uh, he would be taking this office? And also, uh, more than 10 years ago, uh, this person's uh, act or his family's uh, decision, how would he have known that uh, today it could have uh, become a public debate subject? Some members actually said that uh, if we had to dig up all the old records and also the transactions um, involving his companies and so on, well, whatever you did in the past, including these overseas companies, whether or not they were involved in some uh, activities and you would have to um, give an account uh, or a full account of all the activities. All right, everybody was trying to say that uh, there is no way that uh, you can have this uh, four vision and uh, Kenneth Chen, not even uh, not not even you, you won't, you wouldn't be able to have that foresight. But then this is really ridiculous. Just think about it. Yes, uh, nobody uh, can uh, tell or what is going to happen uh, 10, 20 years down the road. Of course, 19 years ago, no one would have been able to tell that. Of course, that's true. But then under the system, officials, civil servants, logical members, we are no longer a private individual. We are no longer acting in our personal capacity because we're in, we are involved uh, in the discharge of public duties and we are exercising public power. And therefore, whatever we say, whatever we do, it should no longer be judged or understood um, as a private act. That's why worldwide there are many politicians uh, who got themselves uh, uh, involved um, in scandals and so on. Yes, uh, you might say that there are a lot of gray areas and there are opportunities or chances are that you might have forgotten certain things and that's why you would have to try and find out more about this. But then, in any case, as a public figure, as a lawmaker, as a public officer, as a bureau director, as a chief executive. All right, so while you're in your post, the public and members of the public have a very clear moral expectation on you. And I don't think that uh, the expectation is any in any way higher than what we had expected of others in the past. All right, uh, this is um, um, this is just um, uh, these are just fundamentals. 
these are just uh, introduction to politics. You cannot just uh, say that uh, he is not uh, a prophet, and therefore there is no way that he can tell what is going to happen sometime down the road. Well, in Germany, several decades ago, he had a business partner, and uh, he also took out loans and so on, and that he was also involved in some property transactions and so on. And when the um, yeah, e details were exposed uh, when the public tried to query him, and uh, again he tried to say that uh, all right, uh, these are just uh, uh, legit normal business transactions. And uh, once he became the president, uh, uh, the uh, pri the premier Macau M Macau told him that uh, all right, this is something that um, we cannot uh, take on. Because this is uh, going to be a bomb on this, and uh, this also happened in the UK. All right, um, well, in the middle of the night, uh, when you go, when you went to the park, when you did something, a member of the uh, a member of parliament uh, went to the park and he did something that was uh, um, indiscreet, and uh, either he could be investigated or. In the process of this thorough investigation, he decided that uh, he would take up this political responsibility. This is the um, basic requirement of somebody in public office. That's why he chose to leave. He chose to step down, and that's a way that he was able to um, uh, detonate uh, this uh, bomb for or defuse this bomb for his political party and also for his government. So that's uh, something that uh, one would expect. One would be expect of a public officer. You can't say that uh, these are private or personal acts of an individual and therefore we should not uh, kick up a fuss of this. That's why we've been working so hard to set up this select committee under the LCPNP ordinance in order to get to the bottom of the truth. And after the incident was exposed, uh, I asked this question because I was trying to know in September in what way and uh, what substance was included in the report made by Paul Chen to the chief executive, Mr. C. Y. Leung, and what kind of um, direction was given by the uh, chief executive to you? Um, were there any, was there any evidence to show that uh, he, you did make that declaration? Did you tell uh, the whole truth? And uh, is it that uh, there is something that you both try to cover up? Or are you trying to cover up each other? All right, given your popularity, and given your ability and everything, uh, apparently you do not uh, fare very well in all these uh, scoring or scores. So uh, when it comes to land issues, there are a lot of disputes. This morning, I was very concerned about uh, the um, military site um, in Central Waterfront. How come it cannot be open as a public open space uh, to the use of the site at uh, Lee Wai Lei College, and then to uh, Queen's Hill and also anti North East. All these warrant very serious attention and serious debate, but then unfortunately and regrettably in the process of hand of your handling of this the um ability that you have shown and uh, the ability that you have shown in convincing others or persuading others, well, there is a very big uh, cross uh, given to you by the public. All right, uh, well, um, well, what's the percentage of country park vis-a-vis uh, -vis the um, the entire territory? All right, uh, whether should it be forty percent or seventy percent? Well, the De development bureau ended up issuing a statement saying that uh, you. What your remarks are could not represent the administration. So the public know very well how well you've been doing. And under the monitoring of this council and the public, we cannot but ask this question. That is, why do taxpayers have to spend so many resources in hiring somebody whose ability, whose integrity, and credibility have been subject to such a query in handling such sensitive issues of land development. Bureau Director, have you ever thought about this today? Despite the fact that uh, fortunately you might be able to hang on, you might be able to stay on your post, but then why don't you take a step back? 
it could be a brand new world. For those from the pro-establishment camp, in particular those are from the FC, they have used uh, very interesting arguments uh, to defend you or to come to your defense, but then do you, do you really know what they think about you? Are they serious? Are they sincere? Or is it that they have been under pressure and as a result they have not been able to tell the truth, they have not been able to speak their mind? When the public watch this debate, they would also know that uh, there is a high chance that uh, this motion would be vetoed. But then, yes, we may not be able to set up this select committee under the LCPNP ordinance to look into the farmland that you own in anti northeast and also your company's involvement or the activities involving your companies. Yes, we may not be able to proceed. But then, Please don't think that uh, after today, everything will just uh, evaporate. No, it's not that easy. The road or the path is going to be narrower and narrower. It's going to be more difficult and um, the gradient is going to be steeper and uh, the traps that you might find yourself in would be steeper and steeper. But then what bothers me is not about your personal position. This is really a personal issue. It's about the public in Hong Kong. We have been um, condemned uh, to be stuck with you. Thank you. I support the motion. Mr. Pokim. Mr. President, uh, this is the first meeting. Um, after the resumption of this council from recess, um, there are a lot of uh, well wishes. People hope that after two months summer vacation, when we come back to this council, we will speak on urgent matters relating to the livelihood of the people. We should work together to solve all the uh, thorny problems, but it is really a pity that Mr. K.K. Kwok, in the first motion of this council, uh, asked for invoking the electrical powers and privileges ordinance to conduct an investigation on Paul Chen and his family members uh, in respect of purchasing a piece of land 19 years ago. Uh, that uh, I think um, people have views on buying land and making investments. Um, up till now, we have not seen any evidence uh, to um, show that Mr. Chen abused his office and seek personal benefits. The opposition are chasing after him and they keep harping on the same issue. The members of the opposition also claim that if Paul Chen doesn't step down, they will do everything in this council. Um, inside and outside this council uh, to block the work of the Development Bureau. That is being personal. The opposition tries to attack uh, Paul Chen today and next week they move a motion calling for C.Y. Leung, the CE, to step down. The, this series of acts uh, aims at uh, undermining the credibility uh, of um, C.Y. Leung and his team. It is alleged that uh, Po Chen hoard up land uh, for his own benefit. The opposition organized marches and asked for Ch Po Chen to step down and shelve the anti Northeast development project. The purpose is obvious. If um, the development of anti northeast is shelved, then the CY Leung um, government's attempt to uh, increase land supply, thereby reducing social conflicts, uh, will be substantially undermined. And that is the objective of the opposition. 
they just target at the owning of land, a piece of land 19 years ago. Now, Mr. Um, President, when I was um, a electrical member before it, the, um, whether it's before the uh, reunification or after that, the council had been very careful in invo invoking the powers and privileges. They wouldn't uh, use that powers and privileges lightly. There were different political parties who had different uh, political positions. They were not personal. Say, for example, the confusion, the chaos arising from the um, new airport and also short piling of HOS developments. Um, there were consensus across the party line. They were determined to prevent the reoccurrence of these mistakes. They would like to get the job done. They worked for the overall interests of Hong Kong, but the LegCo here and now is different. Since Mr. Leung has become the CE, the opposition time and again asked to invoke powers and privileges, uh, whether it is the UBW of the CE or the disclosure of information by Liu Mengxiong or Liu Mengxiong or the um, Hong Kong uh, Mercantile Exchange or dispute of uh, the um, digital radio. They all ask for uh, the electrical PNP ordinance. It seems that this sort of the emperor, so to speak, has become the tool for political uh, demagoguery. Uh, Mr. Po Chen is alleged uh, to seek personal gain in public office. Uh, they say that they report to the uh, police headquarters, the IRD, the ICAC, the bankruptcy um, office, and those, uh, or rather the official receiver's office, uh, uh, also comp uh, and also a company registrar. Now, since they have done all that, these government departments will have to uh, deal with these so-called reports according to their existing procedures. There is no reason for this council to spend public money to investigate into this case. In dealing with farmland owned by family members, uh, members may have different views and criticisms towards Mr. Paul Chan, but I think we should recognize the following facts. First, Mr. Chan bought the farmland ten years ago, uh, 19 years ago. The piece of farmland was bought 19 years ago, and at that time, the administration hadn't announced the development proposals. At that time, Mr. Po Chen was not a government official. He uh, is an accountant. The land purchase was entirely lawful. It was a uh, private uh, transaction. It is entirely protected by law. Uh, the people of Hong Kong have the right to grasp any business opportunity. Why? Members accuse that as uh, land hoarding, or says that, uh, m members say that it is a crime and cannot be accepted. When Mr. Paul Chen was appointed uh, to be the Secretary for Development, uh, members said that it was uh, uh, it was a uh, tortuous route. Uh, it, he was the candidate of the deputy um, finance secretary, uh, deputy financial secretary. Uh, uh, at that time, the secretary for development uh, seat was taken by somebody else. Later, there was another incident, and then Mr. Chen uh, took the seat. If one accused him of seeking um, land interests, um, that was really ridiculous. That is really ridiculous. And last year in September, he reported to the CE his interests. 
People doubted that. Uh, was there any evidence you challenged the uh, CE for con uh, co covering up for uh, Paul Chen? And that is a distrust towards the current government. It is just uh, kicking up a lot of us. And Mrs. Chen, um, Frida Hui, sold her company at a consideration of $2.7 million. And the company had already uh, sold a piece of land by a public uh, tender. Um, some members questioned whether Paul Chen gave money to the younger brother of Mrs. Hui, uh, um, uh, Mrs. Chen. The question is whether the land is owned by uh, Paul Chen. I don't believe the council can look into the source of fun of Mr. Hui, who is the sister, who is the brother, who is the brother of uh, Mrs. Chen. Is it appropriate to do so? Now you say he was bankrupt, and how uh, could he have that amount of money? But he was only uh, bankrupt six years ago, and how could you say that he has no money now? I think uh, I, I think these accusations are really uh, eye-opening. Um, according to the information disclosed, um, M Mrs. Chen sold a piece of land because she um, would. Um, try to avoid being seen uh, to be making uh, any profits from um, the fact that uh, her husband is the Secretary for Development. She would like to um, do away with all the suspicion. Well, but I also want to say that Mr. Po Chen has not been very eloquent in responding to the questions. It doesn't mean that there is any abuse of public office. Mr. Chen, in dealing with the matter, according to existing information, has not breached the rules nor the law. Some uh, members say that setting up a select committee is to give Mr. Chen a chance to clarify himself. and to do justice to Mr. Chen. But when we ask for a hearing on Mr. Kem Nai Wai, I have not heard the same argument from the opposition. Mr. Kenneth Chen asked the uh, lawyer, the, the pro-establishment, to give uh, justifications on our position. I've already given the justifications, but having heard Mr. Uh, Kenneth Chen's speech, I see no um, justification for supporting the select committee. He just lectured us. He mentioned public opinion. He meant about, he, he said about uh, ruling Hong Kong of conscience. I think it is all, these are all his prejudice. As for Mr. K.K. Kwok, he said that, um, Paul Chen uh, will give further explanation that shows uh, that he is hiding something and the council should therefore um, invoke the LegCo PNP ordinance to investigate the case. That's really ridiculous. These arguments are all illogical. It's just uh, they try to frame him. Uh, this is just like uh, the... Uh, Irrational words of Leung Kwok Hong. These are all illogical. Mr. Paul Chen is willing to give further explanation, and that shows that he is honest. But this 
is regarded by K.K. Kwok as uh, Mr. Chen is trying to hide. Uh, that's really uh, unfair. We have many deep level social and political problems, including poverty problem, housing problem, and political reform problem. We need the parties within this council to work together to solve these problems. But it's regrettable that the opposition is trying to cook up political issues and um, target against the CY Leung government. They engage in political um, struggle, and that um, put Hong Kong into uh, useless uh, self-attrition. I oppose the motion. Mr. Wong Yuk Man, Mr. President, Paul Chan has to be held accountable for his lack of integrity. He must step down. In July this year, Mr. Paul Chan, the Secretary for Development, was discovered to have hoarded farmland to the tune of 18,000 square feet together with his family members. He could be reaping huge profits on that, so he's suspicious of that. Apart from drink driving, this is the third major political scandal on the part of Mr. Paul Chan. After the disclosure or exposure, Mr. Paul Chan has not been frank. He was only disclosing information like squeezing toothpaste out of the tube. He's actually insulting public wisdom. With all criticisms from all sectors of the community, Paul Chan was shameless. He did not step down. He said that uh, he's being compassionate, and he also cited the school anthem of New Asia College by saying that he would march over life and pick the loads. He has now got the lowest popularity rate of all the accountability officials. Last year, at our LegCo meetings on subdivided flats and drink driving, we moved motions to for a no confidence vote on Paul Chan. If the pro establishment camp had voted in support of those motions, we would not have arrived at today's dilemma. The pro-establishment camp is not differentiating good and bad as well as right and wrong. They all said that this whole incident should come to a close. This is to protect the government. There are so many suspicions in relation to land hoarding on the part of Paul Chan. It is necessary for him to explain clearly to the public. He must give a clear account. Therefore, if he's unwilling to step down and he's unwilling to explain, we should invoke the electoral powers and privileges ordinance to appoint a select committee to inquire into the whole incident. That's necessary. But I'm not on this. I'm looking at this from politics and the political point of view. Paul Chan must step down immediately. In September, it's discovered that he has been making use of dormant companies to evade tax. Understand that the Commercial Crime Bureau of the police has interfered into the matter already. It's not just a matter of integrity. It's also about public confidence and trust. So Paul Chan should step down. At this juncture, some people may remark that all accusations about Paul Chan are unfounded. So it's unfair to ask him to step down. If that is the case, why not pass this motion to invoke the Powers and Privileges Ordinance to set up a select committee to vindicate him? Well, the underlying language is very clear. Unless the court convicts him, he needs not step down. That's really absurd. No matter how able Carrie Lam is, how good her image is, she 
has no method to protect something, somebody who is in the wrong. Democracy is about the rule of law, public opinion, and democratic politics. Those who are going their own way, casually and randomly, will never be able to understand accountable politics, democratic politics, and the rule of law because their basis is public opinion. Now, public opinion does not want you. All popularity ratings show that uh, you're always on the lower side of the popularity scale. With you, the SARG is doomed to failure. Just recently, the director of the Taiwan Agency in Hong Kong pointed out what merits Taiwan has. In Taiwan, if the government is not good, they can change the government. Ma Yingjiu, in order to establish the rule of justice and rule of law, the Kuomintang drove Wang Jinping out. Politically, Ma Yingjiu lost that battle. But here in Hong Kong, those who arrest the thieves are condemned. The thieves get off the hook. Well, after that Taiwan incident, the popularity rate of Ma Yingju dropped tremendously. He is now under investigation. Is Taiwan in chaos? Taiwan is still in order, and more and more people are emigrating to Taiwan. And then in the army, when a soldier was tortured to death, the Minister of Defense had to step down. Why? It has something to do with the Minister of Defense. It's because he's an accountable official. Officials must abide by the rule. And above the law, we have the Constitution. Behavior must not be against the laws. The laws must not be against the Constitution. And now we're arguing about land hoarding. Of course, they say that back then, he's still not in his present post. Well, what we're talking about is that we do not trust you. CS, we don't trust your team. One official has caused the whole SARG to lose credit credibility. Paul Chan, Mr. Paul Chan, how come you are still staying in your post? It's so simple. Accountability politics means that you have to be morally accountable, politically accountable, legally accountable. You have to bear your political responsibility. Otherwise, you should not be called an official of accountability. That is ABC. This is politics, political morality. You don't even know the ABC of politics. You said that many years ago you transferred your interest to your wife, blah, blah, blah. We need not argue about all these. To argue about all these, we should set up a select committee to form a platform for arguing. Why should we be arguing? The Democrats are repeating themselves. If we don't trust you, you should step down with examples, both locally and overseas. In 2008, we had this American, we had this UK minister who did not timely announce the Donations he received in the election sat down because in the UK, candidates should explain in time the donations received. He only admitted £82,000, but then the newspapers disclosed that he hit another sum of donation of £10,000. And then through a think tank that has stopped operating, he had received donations as well. Some 
from people who supported apartheid in South Africa. On the 12th of January that year, he explained that it's because he's too busy, he's not in dereliction of duty. The Guardian and other newspapers reported that he intentionally cheated the EAC and the public. He also returned 25,000 pounds to the authorities. But after Blizz investigation, he announced that he would step down. He said that he resigned to prove that he's innocent. Later, the cabinet had to be reorganized just because of one person. That is political accountability. When the police and the prosecution unit found him innocent, he was restored to his post. There's another example which has been cited by some of our colleagues. That is our former financial secretary, Mr. Anthony Leung. Ten years ago, Anthony Leung was alleged to have bought a car before tax changes involving $190,000. And later, he donated $380,000 to the community chest. Still, the public was annoyed. I recall that I talked to him twice about this. I suggested that he step down. Eventually, Anthony Leung resigned to Tong Chihua twice. The first resignation was not accepted, but the second one was accepted. He sincerely apologized to the public. Recently, on Po Chan Secretary for Development's incident, he made this remark. Those who are in senior posts should avoid suspicion. Once there's suspicion, he should resign. He also cited his own example in 2003. The crucial point is not whether or not there's corruption. The most important point is that we should avoid suspicion. Bo Chan said that he was not greedy even on 90% of his revenue or income. Oh, that's Anthony Leung's example. Has Paul Chan referred to the opinion of Anthony Leung? Was there any inspiration? Did he do something more evil than what you have done? Integrity and credibility are most important for politicians. That happened in the past as well as at present. In ancient times, they said that when there's no more credibility or integrity, officials will be considered as telling lies. Our able president also cited the same example to describe the dilemma of the present SARG. The former U.S. president, the senior President Bush says something about perception is reality. That's very simple reasoning. Politicians should understand that other people's perception means fact. You cannot grumble. You ha cannot say that it's only perception. Mr. President, perception is very important. You said that the CPG should get rid of the devil in his heart, and you're immediately criticized by the leftist media. In politics, perception means truth, particularly under democratic politics, public figures and political figures will readily get blame. That's easily understood. If Mr. Paul Chen does not understand this, he should refer to Zhu Liang, 
in the era of the three kingdoms. First of all, we must differentiate between the right and the wrong. Secondly, we must observe the changes. Thirdly, we must know the plan. And fourthly, we must observe people's expressions. And fifthly, we must observe whether a person is alert when he's drunk. Six, to observe the sleep. Seventh, we should read the words of a person. Pa Chan showed to us his drink driving. Facing all these problems, how can you still stay in your post? You should better step down immediately. Thank you, President. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Paul Chair. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the motion today is about whether the powers and the electrical powers and privileges ordinance should be invoked to set up a select committee to look into the ownership of farmland and the relevant matters. Having heard the speeches from members, I found in particular for those supporting the setting up of a select committee, the ultimate motive or the ulterior motive is not about setting up a select committee, but rather an opportunity for Paul Chan, Secretary, to be humiliated or to ask him to step down. But I think it would be more um, fair to him if we uh, look at things from a more objective perspective. Mr. President, today we should not be talking about Paul Chan's declining popularity. He should not be judged on his low popularity ratings, or he we would have been uh, done so long ago. Equally, we should not set up. Um, a proposal of um, overturning the Leung administration because this will give the public an impression that we are having too much infighting. So let us come back to the basic and see what the select committee, if set up, should do. We all know that for a select committee to be set up, the purpose is to look into a serious misconduct on the part of a government senior government official in the face of public interest. And we must look at whether there is prima facie case, that is, whether there is sufficient evidence. So like Mr. Chen Kin Paul said, we should not perform an operation on the patient to find out whether the patient is suffering from any disease. Rather, um, we should look at the symptoms first. So let us gauge the uh, whole matter again. If this is not a life issue, regardless of whether the, he is a public official, if the issue is life and we just ignore it, then the consequences would uh, become very dire. Uh, just like Mr. Leung Chin Man or the um, CY Leung's participation as the adjudicating uh, panel member on the West uh, Kowloon Cultural District Design Competition, um, the seriousness were, was relatively um, um, less. Whereas, if the issue is live, then the, seri then, then the uh, consequence should, could be very serious. Just now, Mr. Wong Yuk Man uh, quoted an example. The minister in the United Kingdom was in charge of the um, uh, the purview um, of welfare or labor, and these are less sensitive issues. On the contrary, 
uh, with the uh, back with the situation of uh, property hegemony in Hong Kong, um, these issues are very sensitive. There could be wide um, repercussions on a single issue. So, as um, some colleagues who are against the motion put it, they say that uh, some are cons uh, constantly inciting uh, others to support the stepping down of the um, official, or they say that uh, the infighting will just uh, continue, or as Chief Secretary uh, puts it, it's a collective decision from the whole administration instead of an individual uh, official. Or as Mr. James Tan puts it, uh, this uh, is nothing new. The incident happened a long time ago. And I think we should focus on the two matters that I mentioned. The first is whether this is an, an ongoing life issue, and the second is the sensitivity of the issue. Comparing to Mr. Franklin Lam or Mr. Barry Zhang, equally, members of the public felt that um, we should not be wasting public money on the, the on the, um, these uh, matters, but. We need to look at uh, whether there are other circumstances in this incident. Now, first we look at whether there is a prima facie case. Um, another colleague already mentioned the seven points. In particular, I n I've noted the the fifth, sixth, and seventh points in relation to the registration of BVI companies, their um, ownership, and the interest behind. In this incident. The secretary already admitted that he had been clumsy in his communication, and yet we need to look at whether there are other um, problems uh, leading to his integrity being called into question. Now, throughout the incident, um, he has not been consistent in terms of the definition of family or the ownership of land. And today there is a new um, statement um, as to why the plot was uh, leased to the uh, farmer at a nominal rent of ten dollars or sixty dollars um, now this version is different than before um, I wonder whether uh, secretary mr. Paul Chan has um, rethought the whole matter uh, and with the assistance of his lawyers came up with this new statement. And the inconsistencies would just cause uh, more doubts in the minds of the general public. Mr. President, so there seems to be some prima facie evidence, but whether we have reached the critical point for us to press this button is another matter. We need to think about alternatives. Secretary attended panel meetings time and again to give his explanations, but like he said, he had been clumsy in doing so, and the more he explained about it, the more that the worse it got. The secretary also issued statements. Now, C um, Chief Executive Mr. C. Y. Leung also issued a 14-page statement in relation to his unauthorized building works, and uh, relatively um, speaking, um, Mr. Paul Chan's um, statements were not as long, and um, well, um, and he had refused to uh, give statements under affirmation or ever uh, given affidavit. Um, in relation to the BVI companies, be it the properties held by BVI companies or the application of mortgages with banks, uh, very often if the actual ownership is not clear, then the acceptable practice is to take an oath um, in a court um, with the risk of being accused of perjury, uh, confirm uh, the ownership. This can help the general public understand better uh, the whole incident. This 
is also a middle of the road approach, uh, which can help save the resources in setting up a select committee in this council instead. So I hope the secretary can, at an appropriate time, explain to us whether he has thoroughly considered this middle of the road approach, uh, which um, is more acceptable to the majority of members. Mr. President. Now, the Secretary, Mr. Paul Chan, made some opening remarks, and uh, it seemed to give us a better picture of his situation. However, despite the political significance of his remarks, a legal document uh, might give a greater legal effect. So I again urge Secretary to consider this approach. The decision was made more than 10 years ago. Whether it involved any attempt of uh, seeking personal gain through its official post, well, uh, if you ask me, according to the, the Paul Chan that I uh, know, I don't think uh, he um, uh, I don't think he is uh, such um, or he has gone that low. However, as a as an accounting professional, has he over um, has he overly protected himself? Um, I mean, setting up a BVI company is not uncommon, but. Um, are uh, the interests intertwined, intertwined? I think accounting professionals as well as uh, other professionals like myself should reflect on ourselves because in the face of allegations, it is quite difficult to explain it away. And it also touches upon the issue of a dormant company. It is also a common practice, but that's exactly because Mr. Paul Chan, the secretary, was once a leading figure in the accounting sector. He understands perfectly well the consequence of um, turning the company into a dormant company. There should not be any accounting uh, or relevant accounting transaction. Otherwise, there won't be any exemption. All the um, bookkeeping and auditing requirements must be fulfilled. And in relation to the directors and shareholders well, uh, of the company, um, that liability may be incurred. Even if it's a transaction involving an amount as small as $60, this would qualify an, as an accounting transaction. So maybe Mr. Paul Chen should explain why, although this company was a dormant company, it had continued to enjoy the exemption. So this is something for him to clarify. In short, Mr. President, Many of uh, of um, my fellow members and many members of the general public still feel that there are doubts yet to be clarified in this matter, and also on the two points I mentioned, that is whether this is an, a, still a live issue, and when we talk about the northwest. Uh, anti-development or other major decisions on uh, infrastructure projects, uh, things will be very sensitive. Now, um, of course, the best scenario would be like Mr. Car uh, Mrs. Carrie Lam, um, who doesn't own any property in Hong Kong. But if there are things uh, that are still yet to be disclosed, and there are six, uh, at least five or six BVI companies involved, uh, each of which may face allegations of um, improper transactions, clarification is all the more necessary. So, um, Secretary, 
I hope that at least you can take an affirmation uh, to confirm your opening statement. And also, uh, for the seven points uh, mentioned and um, other points made by members, if you could give an undertaking that you would confirm those matters within seven days uh, under affirmation or under oath, I think that this can reassure uh, all of us. Otherwise, I think that I would not veto this motion uh, because I want to protect the public's right to know. Does any other member wish to speak? Ms. An Chen. Thank you, Madam, uh, Mr. President. The popularity rating of the government has gone up recently. Some said uh, that's the case because recently the government has st stood firm by the um, Harsh measures to crack down to to curb a property prices escalation. That's why there are more people supporting the government. And also, some said it's probably because of the introduction of the poverty line recently. And many uh, could see the government's determination in alleviating poverty. So, and so there are various theories. But then someone said this to me. I think he's put it um, most succinctly and to the point. He said it's not to do with all that. It's because Lechko was uh, in recess. The um, opposition camp has all left Hong Kong for a holiday. So things have come down, and that's why officials could focus on their work. Is that the case? And so, as expected, as soon as uh, Lechko resumes last week at the House Committee meeting, We were told that there would be this motion today to set up a select committee under the Powers and Privileges Ordinance uh, to inquire into uh, our Mr. Paul Chen. And the next week there will be a vote of no confidence motion in the CE. And then other members said today, well, if uh, um, you have done nothing wrong, what's wrong with people investigating you? Well, yes, uh, true. Mr. Paul Chen, if you're innocent, let them investigate you. What are you afraid of? But Mr. Chen said, no, I'm not afraid. Just that um, the investigation will take up a lot of time of m members of this council. And uh, I've tried to find out how much uh, time would be taken up uh, to do this PNP investigation. How will we be affected? And I checked with staff, and the uh, secretary of staff gave me some information. In the past, on major cases, the pro-establishment camp supported um, such action. For example, in 2008, we supported the um, um, investigation into the Lang Chiman case. When we supported the setting of the set, uh, select committee last year, we supported uh, the select committee to look into the West Kowloon competition case involving Mr. Siwai Leung. And then, of course, we also supported the subcommittee uh, to look into the Lehman Brothers mini bond case, all these um, you know were set up under the PMP ordinance. Uh, for the Mr. Lang Chin Men Select Committee, we started in December 2008, and we submitted the report in uh, December 2010. That means it took us two years to do the investigation, more than 500 hours. Now, I don't know how many members will join the select committee. Uh, if, say, all of us are interested, maybe all 60-odd members could join the select committee. Maybe you, even you could join, President, then. We won't be doing anything else. So um, we will all be investigating into uh, Paul Chen, or like in the uh, Lang Chan Ying select committee case, we started um, the inquiry in February 2012. We finished in June 2012. Actually, strictly speaking, we haven't completed inquiry, but then the uh, opposition camp was too busy. They had to um, investigate um, Siwa Leung. They were busy with the filibustering. So um, even the report was not published because the opposition camp was too busy with the filibustering. And then the Lehman Brothers case, it took even longer. October 2008 all the way to June 2012, four full years were spent on preparing 
uh, and uh, before they could uh, submit a report. Well, it doesn't mean that uh, because it takes long, so we should investigate when where investigation is due. Now, where investigation is due, of course, we must make sure the investigation takes place. But we have to look at the facts. I think just now we've all heard very clearly from the Chief Secretary, Mrs. Carrie Lam. Mr. Paul Chen has already made a declaration, and the administration is of view that there's nothing wrong with that declaration. It's proper. And about the uh, farmland case, the relevant shareholders have already published statements. That is, uh, Paul Chen never owned any interests of those companies. So what are you going to investigate into? Dr. Kwok, he doesn't own those companies, so uh, you have to make it clear. Do you want to investigate his wife then? I can tell you. Uh, I don't want to get too upset. I'm really upset, actually. So I don't. So I, I believe yes, we need to investigate someone, but is as uh, you put it at the beginning. We mustn't let a single corrupt official off the hook. But I won't do uh, what uh, your friend did. I don't know which member told you this. Just um, you know, turn uh, uh, turn the other side and uh, and pretend you don't see anything. No, we have to keep our eyes wide open. We have to l look at the facts clearly. So, Doctor Kwok, I ask you to open your eyes wide today and look at the facts. You, what do you want the 70 members in this council to investigate into? How much time do you want to spend of us? From 11 a.m. till now, it's already 6 now, and we're still talking about whether we should do the investigation or not. And there's uh, one other point. Some members of the council or someone from the public have already reported Paul Chen to the ICAC. So you should let ICAC do their investigation. If they could, didn't find out anything, uh, of course, we can't follow up. There's nothing we can do. But if they have uh, found anything, then we could then decide. Maybe then we see there is concrete evidence. Well, then, of course, we want to follow up. Why not? So Dr. Kwok, it's good to have ideals. But sometimes, really, we shouldn't just blindly pursue ideals and um, put aside other matters of interest to the public. We have plenty to do. I and Chen am not here to to play games with you. You know, play investigation games with you. No, I'm not here to do that. I have a lot that I want to say, but of course, uh, many members have already spoken their mind here. I think I'll stop here, President. I am against um, setting up the Select Committee under the PNP ordinance. Does any other member wish to speak? Does any other member wish to speak? Secretary for development. Mr. President and members, 20 members spoke on this motion. In my first speech, I have already clarified a number of salient points in relation to the public concern on uh, my ownership of farmland in Kutong by me my, and my wife and uh, some other personalities. In response to other concerns raised by members, I'm going to make the following supplement so that members can have a better understanding of the details of the matter. Mr. K.K. Kwok, Mr. Li Chao Yan allege that when I made my first response, uh, to the land ownership, I said that I didn't know uh, I wasn't related to that. 
And then in the second occasion, I mentioned my wife and her family. And then I mentioned in the, on the third time, uh, my wife and my son. Well, I think the allegation is misleading. I believe those who attended the meeting of the panel on development know that this is not the fact. When on the day the media report on this case, the morning of 22nd of July, before the panel meeting and after the panel meeting, I took the initiative to meet the media and answer their questions. At the meeting, I also responded to members' questions. And then I flew to Tianjin to attend a conference. The next day, on Tuesday, I was in Tianjin, Tianjin and I took the initiative to reply to the media. They said that in my first response, I said I didn't recall it was not related to me. The allegation uh, is incorrect. As the, the misunderstanding of the term my wife and her family uh, member, I clarify that, and I further clar I, I re I clarify that once again. The misunderstanding uh, was related to the uh, media stand up on two occasions in the same morning the 22nd of July. On the first occasion, it was before the panel meeting. Before I entered the uh, meeting room, I went before the microphones and I said that uh, my wife was a director of a company and minor shareholder, and the company was jointly owned by herself and her family members. The company was in 1990, uh, the company in 1994, that is 19 years ago, bought about uh, a farmland of the size of about 20,000 square feet. And that uh, was, the company was Statement Industries. Her family members uh, refer to the relatives of the family of my wife. Uh, as for the second stand-up, it was after the meeting I went before the microphones. The first question asked by the media was about uh, the actual ownership uh, of Orient Express. My reply was that as for OE, I didn't hold any uh, uh, shares. The company was owned by my wife and family members. I was referring to Orient Express, and the media was asking about Orient Express, and family member, of course, include uh, children. So the two uh, statements refer to different owners. The former referred to statement enterprise, uh, statement industries. The latter refers to OE, Orient Express. Now, in retrospect, if I use the term. Uh, the uh, relatives of my uh, wife's family, then it wouldn't have caused the misunderstanding. Uh, this is unfortunate to have caused misunderstanding, and I didn't expect that. But I uh, stressed that I uh, did not hide anything, and I didn't in uh, I didn't cause any uh, uh, confusion. Now, Mr. Leung, Mr. Kenneth Leung said that uh, he uh, looked at the matter from a professional angle with professional attitude, but his questions were one-sided, and I, did, I do not intend to answer his allegations one by one. But I want to express uh, I want to um, explain three points first concerning uh, the uh, company law and also associated persons, uh, and I apply that. Uh, to my situation or to my case, I think that's not appropriate. Mr. President, uh, I am the uh, Secretary for Development. The rules that is applicable to me is the uh, rules for POAs and also the rules for executive council members. And that is not related to the concept of associated person. These things cannot be, uh, should not be confused. Uh, with regard to the Declaration of Interest Register open to the public, uh, the rule that applies is not uh, the listing rules and, um, or, as, or the its definition of um, associated persons. 
what is applicable is uh, guidelines for uh, POAs and also for um, executive council members. And in my uh, speech, I've already said that I make the declaration according to these two sets of guidelines. The second point concerning the uh, development panel meeting on the 26th of July, a motion was defeated. The motion required me and my family members to disclose land interests in anti northeast. I recall. I recall that. Uh, I recall. Uh, I had asked Mr. Lern what's definition of family members. Uh, did he refer to uh, my wife and also children? Uh, Mr. Lern said no. Then uh, what uh, did he mean? He didn't explain. And how how could one comply with that since it's so unclear? Uh, concerning the declaration of family members, how wide should the scope be, and can that be implemented? Is the demand fair, Mr. President? I want to reiterate this. First, my wife and my children do not own any landed interest in NT Northeast, nor do I. Apart from the uh, farmland in Kutong held by statement industries, my wife didn't own any land in the NT Northeast. Um, Mr. Leung said that being a company secretary, my wife and her family members uh, entered into joint interest to do business, and there is conflict, suspected conflict of interest. The allegation is an, uh, is uh, too ambiguous. Uh, he has to point out what sort of conflict of interest. He has to provide the evidence. In this council, the speeches of members are protected by the legal powers and privileges ordinance. But I hope members. You should not make any comments lightly. Mr. Li Chak Yan asked um, about the um, declaration made by me to Mr. Si Wai Leung and whether it was a remedy. It wasn't a remedy. In reply to members' questions, I had already stated this. In the latter half of September, 2012, when I knew that the farmland in Kutong fell within the limit of um, NT Northeast NDA, I took the initiative to report to Mr. C. Y. Leung according to the mechanism. Mr. President, several members and also some political parties mentioned um the uh, mentioned um the uh, ownership of various uh, offshore companies and they also raise uh, certain questions or doubts in my uh, first speech i said that excellent ss limited or ea in set fidelity management limited or fm in short new horizon ss limited NX in short Um, are um, agents uh, holding the assets of statement industries on behalf of the uh, family of my wife, and uh, that is uh, having a nominee or having an agent holding assets is nothing new, and the um, principals want to protect their pri privacy. I do not, or uh, nor did I, make use of the uh, nominee or agency arrangement of FM, EA, or OE, or NH to hide my interests of farmland, and I have not dodged any tax. The shares hold uh, the shares held by the nominees or um, agencies uh, didn't hold any um, benefits. And the, the um, nominee or agents can only act according to the instruction of the principal. The shares cannot be dealt with without the instruction of the principal. And w without any authorization, the agents cannot disclose the identity of the agent or of the principal. 
and it is not rare to have agents holding shares. I can give you two examples. The first one, Mr. Albert Ho last year uh, was the subject of a complaint. He deliberately uh, hide, uh, he deliberately hid his interest in a company or the shares he held in that company and also the interest in land held by that company. Mr. James Toe in the past was also a subject of complaint that he didn't uh, register his uh, ownership of shares in a certain company. In these two cases, Mr. Uh, Albert Ho and Mr. James Toe uh, were holding shares as, as an agent on behalf of uh, the third parties. I believe members are familiar with this point in respect of um, agents holding shares on behalf of the principals. Members keep asking for uh, who keep uh, members uh, keep asking who are the shareholders behind. I think they uh, either they don't understand uh, the use of agents or they um, have other uh, things in mind. The agents. Um, I think um, the issue is really irrelevant. On the 24th of July, the Statement Industries made a uh, statement. Uh, since October last year, all the owners were in the uh, were in the or are uh, individuals and not um, offshore companies. This is reflected in the annual report of the company. As for the use of offshore, offshore companies, this is very common, in particular in um, estate and also um, in other cases. This is to protect privacy. If um, they are used as holding companies and they do not engage in any op business operations, it is more convenient to use offshore company and is less costly in comparison with using a Hong Kong company. Mr. President, several members and also political parties have asked this. Um, in July 1994, a statement in industries applied to the company registry, uh, company registrar as a dormant company and received and then later received a rent of $60. There was suspicion of uh, breaching the law or dodging tax. In my first speech, I, will, I have already explained that in terms of dodging tax, and I, did not re I do not repeat that. On the 2nd of September 2013, the Statement Industries issued a statement, uh, or rather the 2nd of September, um, not um, a new point I made today. On the 2nd of September, Statement Industries made a statement. The statement uh, said that, that uh, said to the effect that in May 1994, uh, Statement Industries bought farmland in Kutong. There was no intention to let it out. Statement Industries held that piece of land. It didn't uh, own other assets. It didn't engage in any business activities. Therefore, in July the same year, it uh, applied to the company uh, registry uh, to become a dormant um, company, it was in line with the facts. Therefore, there was no false, um, uh, there was no uh, misrepresentation. Apart from this piece of farmland, Statement Industries uh, didn't own um, other assets um, nor uh, any other business. It was only uh, in order to protect the interest that the nominal rent uh, was charged. The statement industries in its statement said that it would appoint professionals to follow up the case of receiving rent. Mr. President, Mr. Kenneth Leung and Mr. Ellen Leung asked about classic success and its relation with us. 
uh, with me and myself. I mean, in fact, in uh, or in a statement on the twenty fifth of July this year, my wife pointed out that she herself, my child, our children, myself, and Orient Express do not hold any interest in classic classic success. And we will appoint lawyers to clarify that and check on that. As for the question of Mr. Wu Chi Wai, I stress once again that according to the guidelines for POAs and also guidelines for executive counselors, I made the declaration to avoid any suspicion of conflict of interest. My wife took the initiative on the 10th of October last year. The um, the uh, thirty seven point five percent of share ownership of state men industries of Shu O E sold the um, shares, so we do not own any uh, landed interests in NT Northeast. Mr. Mock asked about uh, the land resumption compensation. Uh, I have to point out that uh, the compensation mechanism was approved by the LegCo in the 1980s. Every year, the Lands Department reviewed the arrangement and adjusts the rates accordingly. Um, twice a year, and everything is gazetted. The Development Bureau and myself are not involved. As for the allegation of hoarding land, it is um, unfounded. Statement Industries bought farmland 19 years ago. If I, if um, it intended to hoard land, it should uh, have bought um, many more pieces. And um, in fact, nobody knew what would be the land use after 19 years. Mr. Poche asked me to um, make a declaration um, uh, under oath. I don't think that is necessary. I've all along been uh, responding to members uh, truly, and I hope that members and members of the media understand that I have followed the mechanism and make the declaration, and I've also respond your, to your questions in truth. As for the um, comment uh, that I uh, have been giving piecemeal information like uh, squeezing toothpaste in respect of the Kutong case. I think those who uh, did attend the meeting of the panel on the day, the 22nd of July in the morning, a Monday before the panel meeting and after the panel meeting, I took the initiative to meet the media and answer the questions. At the meeting of the panel, I also responded to members' questions before, and then I flew to Tianjin to attend a meeting. On the second day, uh, Tuesday in Tianjin, I also answered the questions of the media out of my own initiative. I attended four public hearings held by the panel on the development of anti northeast at the meeting and after the, at the meetings and after the meetings, I answered questions of mem asked by members and the media. And on the 24th of July, I, uh, my wife and the Statement Industries issued statements to address public concerns, and my wife also issued two more statements to clarify various issues. These happened within a week or so. The farmland was owned by the uh, uh, family of my wife. It was um, the, the transaction was conducted a long time ago. It took time to find out the details. I and my wife uh, had um, responded uh, as soon as possible. Mr. President, I understand that the community, and in particular this council, um, are concerned about the Kutong case. But I hope this will not affect the uh, rational discussion of exploring new land. On the 4th of July, when we announced the revised package of developing anti-northeast, Kutong North and Fanling North 
NDA uh, will become the extension of Fanling and Shangshui New Town, Pingche and Takuling will be incorporated into the study of NT North. The package we announced is the result of careful consideration of public views collected and also the uh, outcome of technical assessment and studies of um, planning and engineering uh, studies. The uh, Kutong, uh, the Fanling Sangshui Kutong New Town development is the first new town development since 1997. It's important source of supply, land supply. It's a major source of land supply uh, in 2022, uh, providing about 60,700 uh, units, among which 36,600 are uh, either HOS or PRX units. Um, the uh, planning and engineering studies of Fanling Shangshui Kutong New Towns were uh, New Town were uh, mainly conducted by the consultants um, employed uh, or rather commissioned through a an open process by the planning department and CEDD in drawing, conducting their study and drawing up options. Um, these, uh, the uh, recommendations will not, uh, the package will not consider the uh, identity of the owners. The Development Bureau and the Relevant Departments will continue to work hard on this and will discuss with the stakeholders on the clearance and also resettlement. This is a very important new town development and we hope that it can proceed smoothly and I hope members will not delay this uh, plan, which is the outcome of um, a decade or so study, consultation and discussion. And I hope members will not misunderstand or um, impede this uh, new town development for the people of Hong Kong simply because of um, this incident involving uh, my wife and her family. Uh, Mr. Quark's motion under the LegCo Parts and Privilege Ordinance is unnecessary and unfair. Uh, his speech um, at the House Committee last Friday and also his comment um, he made at the radio this morning um, was unfounded. I hope members will re uh, reject this motion. Uh, together with my civil service colleagues, we will spare no effort in providing land for the housing and economic development of Hong Kong. I thank the um, colleagues of the Bureau and also the departments for their understanding and support, and I'd like to thank them for their ded dedication in serving the people of Hong Kong. Thank you, Mr. President. The Chief Secretary for Administration, Mr. President, today is the first meeting of the electrical session in 2013 and 14. We have already spent more than four hours on the motion moved by Dr. Pokka Key under the electrical powers and privileges ordinance. Uh, it's like what Mr. Ip Kwok Kim and uh, Ms. An Chiang just said. Next Wednesday, there's going to be another motion to um, express uh, a vote of no confidence in the chief executive. In fact, uh, we've been prepared for that. We understood that uh, as soon as this council resumes, then uh, some members would definitely be going after certain officials uh, on certain subjects. And uh, I can only say that uh, I feel helpless about this because on the one hand, I do respect the rights of this council to debate issues, but then what's before us is a lot of issues uh, that would require the executive and the legislature to work interactively, whether or not it's about uh, developing our economic, um, uh, our economy and also livelihood issues. Well, uh, I'd like to look at it uh, from the issue itself and also the uh, subject matter, and I'd like to urge members uh, to reject or to uh, oppose uh, the motion moved by Dr. Kwok Ka Ki. Well, politically speaking, as uh, PAOs, uh, Mr. Paul Chan will have to uh, abide by the uh, code of uh, uh, the code of conduct uh, for PAOs, and uh, that would also require political uh, PAOs uh, to fill out uh, forms. Uh, they are specified forms, and uh, they would be made available for public inspection in order to uphold public confidence and trust in them. And also, in discharging their duties, PAOs, uh, if they find that uh, their personal interests might 
be seen to influence the discharging or the, of the duties, then they will have to declare that. And uh, they will also have to avoid uh, any direct or potential conflict of interest. And uh, as a member of the Executive Council, Mr. Paul Chen would also have to adhere to the very stringent uh, declaration of interest system every year. And on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, it's a requirement for uh, executive, executive Council members to declare their interest. And ex members will also have to review the matters under discussion or deliberation by the Executive Council to see if there is any conflict of interest. And before any such discussion, they will also have to declare interest. And as PAOs and EXCO members, they will also be subject to this set of rules. Last year, well, uh, Mr. Justice uh, Andrew Lee and four other members uh, formed this uh, committee on the prevention of um, conflict of interest. And uh, they also review the code of conduct uh, for PAOs and also um, the uh, EXCO's uh, declaration in Declaration of Interest Mechanism, and in May this year, uh, it released uh, the report. And uh, it also said that in terms of comprehensiveness and also its applicability, well, uh, they are also comparable to the civil service system. And it's also of the view that with regard to the declaration system involving PAOs and also the um, declaration of interest on investment and so on, they are on a par with civil service uh, rules and regulations, and therefore is satisfactory. And uh, most. Basically, most of these rules have been improved uh, in line with the recommendations by the committee, and therefore the current system is already rather stringent. It's been well established and uh, time honored. And uh, between respecting the individual's freedom and privacy, and also protecting public interest, we have already struck the balance. So we have already we have to emphasize that we have to we have already struck the ba right balance. We have to protect uh, the individual's privacy while uh, protecting public interest. We attach a lot of importance uh, to good governance and uh, also a high degree of transparency. But then if there is no attention or protection of the individual's privacy, then any government would find it difficult to find uh, capable persons to join the government. And on this incident in itself, uh, the Secretary has already given uh, a full account on this just now. I have to say that uh, Mr. Chen, in dealing with um, his and his family's involvement in the farmland um, in Kutong, well, as he has repeatedly said, uh, is totally is fully in line with the current requirement. And also, Mr. Chen's wife has also token, taken the initiative to sell the interest uh, in October last year to other parties in order to avoid any uh, conflict of interest. And Mr. Chen has also repeatedly explained the issue to this council and uh, the public. And there is no evidence to show that in discharging his duties as uh, PAO and also in dealing with the NENT issue, there is any breach of the rules and regulations or any mis conduct. And according to some analysis, in conducting such uh, land planning or uh, planning issue, professional civil servants uh, would be responsible for that, and they would be doing so in accordance with professional analysis, analysis. And there is no question of any individual official influencing the decision. That's why to set up a select committee under the, the LCP and P ordinance is totally unnecessary, and that is also not making good use of the resources and time of this council. In dealing with this issue, Mr. Chen agreed that uh, in terms of communication and explaining the issue, there is room for improvement. I also hope that uh, members will be uh, pragmatic so that I uh, will make use of the existing platform and uh, the room uh, available so that uh, Mr. Chen will be given a chance to explain the situation instead of just uh, uh, casually invoking the LCPNP ordinance to set up select committee to look into it. Yes, the administration understands that uh, there is a uh, high expectation on the part of the public on PAOs in order to avoid any possible transfer of uh, benefit. And we are also subject to the regulation by this council, the media, and the public. And uh, the accountability team, including myself and Mr. Paul Chen, have been working very hard. We are dedicated in serving the community. Community. We hope to do something good. And since taking office, Mr. Paul Chen has been serving the community and is very dedicated in terms of um, uh, infrastructure and development. He has been working very hard and dedicated. We hope that uh, we can give him a fair judgment. These are my remarks. I urge members to veto this motion. Dr. Kuakaki, you may now reply. Mr. President, The Secretary, Mr. Chan, spoke, so did the CS4A, Mrs. Carrie Lam, and I am very disappointed. As I said, the appointment of a select committee under the LCPNP 
is an objective approach. It is an approach without any preconceived stance. This is to look into issues that are of significance and matters that are of public interest. Through the use of the LCPNP, matters can be clarified. Of course, I know that we need the rule of law. We need a lot of time and effort to find land for development to resolve the many issues plaguing Hong Kong. And I'm very disappointed with what Mrs. Carrie Lam said. She knew full well that the select committee under the LCPNP is only a platform for all parties involved to give evidence. If what Mr. Po Chan said is true and the whole truth and there was no hidden agenda and nothing abnormal, then he should not fear to make a clean breast of things that have happened to the Legislative Council. The LegCo is an important part of the political structure in Hong Kong. Mrs. Chen, you said if the LegCo raise any doubts, then it is a waste of members' time and your time. I'm very disappointed. You've been an official for over 30 years. You should know full well that the LegCo is an important role to play. They, we make sure that uh, you are accountable to the public. We monitor your work. Without the LegCo, I am sure that things would have been very different. You said that if we have another select committee, we would deter people who are of a good caliber. From, we would prevent them from joining the government. But the chief executive with a poor team will be the reason that deters people of high caliber um, from joining the the, uh, the administration. I believe, Ms. Um, CS4A, you are not involved in this at all. So you can have no fear of the let go. Anyone who has not done anything wrong will have no fear of the let go. The let go's role has been slighted. The LegCo's role of monitoring the government has been slighted, and I am very disappointed. Mr. Chen, once again, you blame your... You shifted the responsibilities onto your families once again. Well, you maybe are too smart. You have left nothing out. In your arrangement, there are many companies that you have set up, agents and uh, shareholding. Uh, only a, a, group, a certain group of people, a few groups of people will do that. Those who are involved in money laundering, those who want to avoid tax, and those who do not want to review the, the, the identities of directors, perhaps secretary. Uh, your wife would like to hold some shares. That is normal because so are uh, a lot of Hong Kong people. There are a number of opportunities for you to have done better in this matter first. When you were, well, by chance appointed the Secretary for Development, you knew you were involved in a lot of land issues. You could have made a clean breast to the Chief Executive that you might not be a suitable candidate because of all these land owned. And the second chance was when you announced the NT, uh, NENT development project. Yes, there was no need for you to disclose information about the shares uh, you and your family's help, but you could have chosen to tell us. In between July and September, there were many occasions when you could made it very clear to 
Hong Kong people about uh, complicated issues of uh, shareholding. I am not an accountant, but you could have made uh, an affirmation to set everything out, but you did not do that. There were three chances that you have let go. Then you blame people for having a hidden agenda in um, asking for an investigation. No, there was no hidden agenda. We wanted to see good governance from the administration. Were it not for the media who had who have done some investigative um, reports, we would not have known. We don't. We did not hire any private detective to dig things out. So thank goodness for Hong Kong's media. And you have said on, on a number of occasions as if these land. As if these laws have nothing to do with you, but as the media have reported, the first agreement was signed by you yourself. You said it had nothing to do with you, but the uh, resident, the villager involved um, in the agreement, the one who received the land, uh, the rental receipt, identified you, and you said that when it comes to statement industries, well. There is a Paul and Associates Consulting Limited. On the fifteenth of April, twenty eleven, you uh, so you transferred the shareholder the, the shares of this company away. You are entangled with these companies, and no one know what is true and what is not. Mr. Raymond Wong raised a very important point. He said that for the public, perception is everything. So there is duty for the LegCo to give an account to the public whether the perception is the truth. If the perception is not the truth, then yes, you can continue with very good reason to take uh, forward your work in the Bureau, and that will be the best gift for yourself and for the administration because you will not be encounter any obstacles Instead, you have pushed all these opportunities away. You had a good chance to clarify everything, but you have let that pass. Is it the case that you are withholding something? In today's uh, broadcast and tomorrow's newspaper, people will ask why the administration and Paul Chan continue to refuse to tell the truth. You cannot simply shake them away. You cannot. Please do not think that if this motion is vetoed, you would have got away with it. You will never be able to get away with it because the questions are always in the minds of the public. People will ask questions with everything you do, whether. Your family or you are involved in it. Whether there is any interest, why do you not take a swift approach and deal with it once and for all? There are people who are sp speaking to protect you. Of course, that is w perfectly within my expectation that they would be there to try to protect you. Today, the Lechko will veto this motion. That is inevitable because this is a distorted council. Uh, we have thirty-five, uh, thirty-five um, FC members. Yes, five of them uh, are directly elected, but some of these uh, sectors are elected from just a handful of uh, voters. This motion will be vetoed, and this shows. The glaring fact that this is not a normal council. This is a distorted council. That's why we cherish constitutional development in Hong Kong. We want. We are fighting for uh, the abolition of uh, the split voting. We are fighting for direct election of our chief executive by one person, one vote, because we want Hong Kong to move forward. CS, you know, you should know about this. A lot of uh, pan-democrats have cited 
will have asked a lot of questions. Seven questions from Mr. Allen Leung and questions from Mr. Kenneth Leung. The letter is from the accounting sector. He's a professional. And still, I have not heard any honest answer from the secretary. And I'd like to go over some of uh, the points raised by members. Mr. Chang Kim Po said that there is no need to take into account public perception as long as the system works. But what kind of system is this? The system says that the secretary can simply ma uh, make a report to the uh, chief executive who will decide whether it is appropriate or not. And that is a flaw in the system. If the system is different. If all potential conflict of interest are p announced publicly, then this would not have happened. C. Y. Leung, Mr. C. Y. Leung asked the public to believe him that he is uh, that he is a gatekeeper without fear of flavor. I think you have put Hong Kong people in a very difficult position. From the time when he was preparing for uh, to run for the election, the public perception is that he is not an honest person. I remember a nurse in a hospital who has a, uh, a son who is a toddler, and the, that's the son pointed at C. Y. Leung, asking if that was the person who lied, and if. You ask Hong Kong people to believe that as long as you said it's all right, then he would, then everything is proper and in order. And he asked us to say that, well, uh, that will, that is going to be the Shanghai free trade area. So there is no need to investigate into Po Chan and everything will be um, happy and um, ha everything will go. Well, there will be a lot of replicas of Hong Kong all over China. But why do investors stay in Hong Kong? Because we have a sound system. We have probity on the part of officials. Otherwise, people, investors, would have gone to China instead of coming to Hong Kong. It's because people don't believe the corrupt system um, on the mainland. That's why they are in Hong Kong. We have to preserve the sound system of Hong Kong. This is our core value. They will not be able to um, just make numerous replicas of Hong Kong as long as we have what we have. I believe that maybe one day there will be, but not in the near future. Mr. Lam Tai Fai is a very clever person. He uh, very often quote a Buddhist um, sayings. And sometimes I don't understand them. Well, you said that uh, people who protect um, Po Chen are really protecting him or or putting them in harm's way. And the same goes to C, uh, the, uh, C. Y. Leung. Perhaps if well, all the obstacles are removed, then the popularity rating of C. Y. Leung and Po Chen would have hiked by dozens of points. And if there is a no select committee, everything will be um, swept under the carpet. But do you think that the people will all of a sudden, sudden think that everything is fine, that uh, any anti-development can go ahead and people will love the secretary and the chief executive? No. In the end, you may be putting them in harm's way. So very often it's difficult. Well, when you think that you are doing it with good intentions for um, love and care for that person, maybe you are actually doing something good with uh, doing something bad with uh, good intentions. So you should not object to my motion. I now put the question to you, and that is that the motion moved by Dr. Kwoka be passed. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against please raise their hands. Dr. Kwakaki asked for a division. The bell would be rung for five minutes.
誒、呃、陳慧議員請你坐低。Voting begins. Please check your votes. There are no problems. Voting st closes. The result is played. From FC members, 34 present, 9 yes, 24, no one abstain. From GC members, 35 present, 19 yes, 15 no, no abstention. The motion is not agreed by majority of each of the two groups of members that is still returned by FC and those by GC who are present. I declare the motion negatived.